right. What did you say, Steve? Let's light this candle. Let's light this candle. <laughs> ah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two, our final day of our charity stream playing for charities that help kids and families dealing with poverty, homelessness, and domestic violence. Those situations are sky high, unfortunately, right now with everything going on in the world. Um, so I am Hallie. I am your channel and your stream organizer. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you being with us yesterday. Our, you set record numbers for our channel yesterday. Like, what the crap? That was amazing. Uh, we had a blast yesterday with Bran and the D&D &D 5E crew, Stories in Brass, along with that fabulous dragon voice that he did. <laughs> That was amazing. Uh, and then we played some Humblewood yesterday, a D&D &D 5e setting with Mandy and Alex and Steve. Joining us today yeah. are fabulous James, and I see that the other Alex is getting hit. There's two Alexes. It's very confusing. Okay. Um, He's Alex the character. I know. I'm Alex the idiot. I know. <laughs> two different <laughs> So let me like get how you through. Phrase that. Let me get through these announcements mm -hmm. real fast. I will get out of your hair, and then you can play some dead gone monster of the week. And by the way, <laughs> filters are off for day two, so you can say fuck as much as you want. I don't care. So Woohoo! Fair God warning. <laughs> Yesterday we kept it pretty clean. Today you can do what you want. Um, so if you know of a charity in your area that does similar work. Um, please try and support them. We know money is really tight for a lot of folks. Has been, and it's even worse right now. If you can donate monetarily, that's fabulous. If not, when things get to be safe, as far as um, being able to volunteer or do drives for the charities, that's fantastic. I know two of the charities that we've selected, Project Night Night and Stuffed Animals for Emergencies, do stuffed animal drives. They do book donation drives. Again, when things are safe, and then hopefully the quarantine is over soon. Um, but also we're supporting the UN Refugee Agency and the Children's Aid Foundation of Canada. Those are our four chosen charities. But again, if you've got one in your area, um, please try and reach out to them and support them. We do appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for watching. I will let everyone introduce themselves and their characters and let Steve run his shebang. Uh, in just a minute, I want to say thank you to everyone who's playing and who's running a game. Everyone who has donated, you are fabulous and amazing. If you want to enter our giveaway, I've got more entries, but I would like some more um, to give everyone kind of a fair shot. You can go to our Twitter, at Terrible underscore Party. The pinned tweet has the Google form in there to enter. It takes about 30 seconds. The only reason we're doing it this way is because some of the giveaways have country restrictions as far as where they can be shipped to. And especially, again, with everything going on, we're being extra careful. So that is why we're asking you to please take those 30 seconds and fill that out for us. Um, and then finally, thank you, everyone, who's helped us get the word out, who's helped us organize. Steve has been helping me on the back end with stuff. B was helping me on the back end with stuff. Um, so have fun. I hope you enjoy this game. I know I will because I know this crew and it's going to be a friggin' blast. So I will uh, let Steve take it away and I'll see everybody at the end again. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Adios. Bye, yes. Adios. Hello. 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 Um, welcome Hello. to my our contribution to the charity yeah, stream I, wow yeah all, all well you know i don't know i'm the one talking <laughs> right now and i didn't get to introduce myself yesterday so yeah, i'm steve i am the dm for classless characters which is a three five edition D D planescape podcast uh that is on maybe hiatus right now because rona um you know it really sucks when you're used to playing in the same room <laughs> And you're can't. like, oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> anyway. Can't what? I can't relate. I'm used to being online. So it's like, oh, everyone's schedule is open now. <laughs> no, nah, you lucky bastards. <laughs> See, for me, it's it's the exact opposite. It's I want to play D&D, but uh, I don't want you all in my house making me sick. Um, <laughs> but that's not what we're playing today. I we're going to be I'm going to be running for these lovely folks who I'm going to I let them introduce yourselves. These lovely folks that I'm going to introduce and then have them introduce themselves to you in just a moment here. We're playing some Monster of the Week today, which is one of my favorite games. Yeah, Monster of the Week. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't played it before, it's way easy. It's super simple and it's super fun. And I highly recommend it to everyone. So if you also haven't watched Slam Vanners, which Hallie, Mandy, and myself are all on, 
highly recommend that as well. It's pretty great. Pretty great. So let's dive right on in um, to introducing ourselves. So who wants to go first? Not me. I'm having tech issues. I'm going to resolve those real quick. So you guys go ahead. Okay. Somebody else I'll, go ahead. I'll go then. Um, I'm James. I play in uh, Top of the Order, Pally's Newbie podcast, uh, actual play podcast, which is very fun. Uh, I'm also a writer from England. Some of my books from the giveaway, all signed and magical, complete five book set. It's going to be good. Look forward to playing with you. I didn't know you that. I want to talk to you more about that later. That's a conversation that you and I are going to have at a later date because I didn't know that. <laughs> all right, one of the Alex's, perhaps. Uh, um, hi, I'm Alex. I'm just a dork who loves playing D and D and doing all this kind of stuff. I was here. Like uh, like I mentioned before, I was in the Humblewood game yesterday, and I was also in the last stream, which was for the Rainforest Alliance, and that was a really fun time. So I'm really glad to be here for second, third, like a third game, I guess. Um, and yeah, I'm just some guy who's playing D and I'm not a writer. I'm not. I don't have a cool accent. Yeah, I'm just me. <laughs> Get your still amazing, my friend. So leave it there. <laughs> uh, and I got cereal, so yeah, I guess that's cool. Cereal's good. Cereal's good. Not if it's choking. <laughs> yeah, don't choke. Please don't die. I don't want that. James, um, shut up. It would make for an exciting stream. It time. would. That would be a great start. Um, That's the first scare of this game. Great. <laughs> that's it. We scare everyone into donating for, share, for charity. Next. Next. Yeah, we're going to... If if you don't donate, um, we're going to have Alex continue to choke on cereal. I'll do the saltine challenge. Yeah, every... Oh, my God. You guys should be able to see me now, I think. Yeah. Yes, we got you. Thank goodness. All righty then. Um, well, well, I guess well. I'll I guess I'll go yeah, next. It's fake, off, Alex. Right? fake Alex. Fake Alex. <laughs> uh, uh, normally, uh, you know, real name Michael. I go by Silver Dusk a lot for just about everything. Uh, made Alex for the campaign. <laughs> um, I have played a lot of uh, five, a lot of three five. I don't actually podcast. I feel I'm the uncool one here, but. I'm trying. Too much effort. You're a great I mean, GM, so don't worry. What you need is a, is earned a, your place here. I see. I just play D and D. Really, all the podcasting is done by far more talented people than me. <laughs> I guess that's fair. And I have my camera off because I'm eating a really messy thing of breakfast, so I don't want to. <laughs> that's legit. That all up in the camera. <laughs> I feel you. Finish your breakfast. Yes, it is relatively early for some of us. But anyway. You lose so if I'm going next, uh -huh. hello. I am Mandy. Uh, I play Tad in Slam Banners with Steve and Hallie. Usually, but not today. Not this Monster of the Week game. No, I am going to be playing Ollie. Uh, she is a protector. Uh, of the conscience of a dead person, basically like a guardian angel without the angel part and she's working for the upstairs organization oopsie the office of protective service installments best name ever um every time i hear it i laugh right, uh, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna get into character hold on i need i was gonna say i would like everyone to introduce their characters as well yeah so yeah. i'm i'm Oli, and i'm uh, look, looking out for uh for alex's character real alex character uh red yeah i guess i guess that's a good segue now mm -hmm. um uh so yeah my character is red that is not the real name what's the real name not even they know um they don't really have uh oh music nice they don't yeah. really have good knowledge of their past or anything but they have been cursed with um this uh thing that's based off of Korean folklore known as the Hongaek, which essentially, um, and I'll read a little bit straight off the thing, um, it's a male malevolent red mass known as the Red Disaster or Cloud of Misfortune. Um, people who are naturally unlucky are susceptible to this, and basically if there's an accident or misfortune, then there's going to be traces of this. Um, and uh, if basically the way I made it is that it's a lot more um, intense, 
So it's, it can engulf people and intensify any calamity or illness. So this is like Hongai or, or a red disaster to the extreme, leading to um, if anybody gets near red, they're a threat of just bad luck to the point of death. Which is when Ollie comes in and is like, hey, don't do that. I'm here to help. And then Red's response is, run away because he doesn't want anyone to get hurt. So yeah, I'm just going to be a paranoid spooky guy. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, hope hopefully that's fun. Beautiful. I mean, I'll take points from here. Um, I'm running Archimedes using the Flake playbook. Uh, first time playing Monster of the Week, so it should be fun. Um, he's a complete skeptic doesn't believe in any of the supernatural even when he came across a monster eating his classmates and managed to bust their ass uh, he gets weird intuitions but he's no idea why he just thinks he's incredibly intelligent and hates humans full stop he's antisocial he's weird and this is gonna be fun outstanding and then uh silver hit us all right <coughs> so silver uh aka fake alex i guess we're going with that joke the whole time um alex is uh he's he's the expert he's been around for a long time studied a lot of the monster lore and a lot of... was, the echo is me sorry yep. yeah, yeah if you don't have headphones put them in sorry have so, headphones, but yeah go ahead he studied a lot of the monster lore he's studied uh different uh supernatural occurrences he moved to an area where it was very frequent when he retired from actually hunting them to provide services for those who are trying to um hunt eradicate or i guess help the monsters that aren't going to destroy the world i guess so that's why he's kind of in the areas outstanding um we're rock and roll then so i feel like all right so let me go ahead and um just do that real quick um sorry alex <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna give an exposition here but uh so if you are not familiar with my cosmology the way that i run monster of the week um i like to set it in modern days so it is 2020 um it is pretty much the same conditions that we have right now uh in we are actually i have a date written down the actual date is two weeks ago the 13th of march um, which you may remember was Friday the 13th because monster of the week. <laughs> so the way that uh, my cosmology works is yes, you have your general regular world, but of course, beyond that, there are things that we are not aware of things like monsters and demons and angels and things that go bump in the night. And it's all convoluted and complicated. And if you want to know more about that cosmology, I would like to point you the viewer towards slam banners because we get way more into it there um, and I feel like if I start going off on just like, let me give you the cosmology, we will be here for forever. <laughs> so I would highly recommend uh, looking at Slam Vanners for more information on that. And then for now, we're just going to kind of like get started. There's a specific thing that I am looking for. And there it is. Um all the music that you hear throughout this podcast or throughout this stream, by the way, is a classic character's original tune in some way, shape or form. We are lucky enough on our show to have the amazingly talented Jack Reed. You can find him on Twitter at Jack Reed Bass, who composes everything for us from the ground up. Um, so all of this is our music. This is all original classic characters tunage. This is, this is ours. Uh, I'm going to follow us. I'm going to follow him right now and totally not ask for favors. Um, uh, he he's really bored right now, so he'll make you covers if you ask for it, ask for them. <laughs> he he just made a couple Dave Matthews covers the other day because he was bored. Uh, <laughs> this it's great. I love it. <laughs> so uh, to set up today's game, though, um, this is actually the Slam Banners intro. I just had to put it in there. So uh, today's game, though, um, it is March the thirteenth of twenty twenty. And you are on the island of St. Filbert's, which is my place for Monster of the Week. It is a fictional island off the coast of South Georgia. Um, I actually think I have like a little map from the Slam Vanners that I might be able to show you. Um, doesn't matter. But it's off. It's one of those places near like if you're familiar with the area like Savannah, Tybee Island or Charleston. So it's kind of got that like old southern feel to it. Like imagine, you know, like the mosses and the trees and like swamps and all the stuff. 
<laughs> it is not a real place, though. It is a fairly large fictional island, though. And it is known for its tourism industry, which centers around, surprise, surprise, the supernatural. Um, it's one of those, like, come see the old Southern Ghost Tours kind of places. <laughs> but today, uh, the four of you um, who are connected to each other previously in ways that will come up through the gameplay, we don't need to go through the histories right now for everybody, um, have received some information about some goings down at what was formerly the St. Philbert's Boardwalk, uh, but which has recently been bought out under private management and reincorporated as what I believe it was Finney Phil's Festival Fairgrounds in Phantasmagoria. That sounds like what you told. It sounds right. right. I'm saying that five times fast. I'm not even attempting to say it. I was about to, but then I stopped. Um, I can't even remember it. No. Finney Phil's Festival Fairgrounds Phantasmagoria. Finney Phil's Fairgrounds Festival Phantasmagoria. Finney Phil's Fairgrounds Festival Phantasmagoria. Finney Phil's Fairgrounds Festival Fairgrounds. No, I screwed it up. Um, I, I now, messed it up. Now do that there. without spitting and with more less breathing. Um. Uh, yeah, I know, right? I, there's no way. So okay. Uh, it is like think you know it's like a classic beachside carnival area place. Mm. Um, if you're from the island, maybe you've been here in better days. But because it is March 13th of 2020, Finney Phil's oh. is closed. Not for the weather, not for Friday the 13th, because there's a pandemic. <laughs> Topical. I thought about this last night. I was like, oh my God, it would be closed, wouldn't it? <laughs> like. <laughs> so yes, because of COVID-19 and the Rona, as I like to call it, uh, <laughs> Finney Phil's was one of the first places to close on St. Philbert's because they were like, it's not even really the season yet. And like, not many people were coming and like, that would just be terrible PR. So they're closed. <clears throat> However, that does not just because the general public does get is not getting in does not mean that things are inactive. Um, each of you has a connection to the supernatural in some way, shape or form you've kind of gone a little bit into what that is, uh, but not like super deep. However, that connection for some reason has brought you here. And I'm just going to, for one shot purposes, scoop this up this evening. Um, the sun is setting. It is about six o'clock at night. Um, and that's why we have, you all can see the boardwalk splash, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Very okay. Pretty. Thank you. All of these are stock photos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um that, that i made sure to check the license on um i'm sad there's no like stock image like thing on the center i know right there I, that would be perfect that would be beautiful if there was um but uh what i would like to know with like what has drawn you here yeah. somebody you go first Red? Yeah, somebody somebody yeah me. so uh both of you to assume that he arrived there. As soon as he got the news that there were no people around, Red has been squatting here the entire day. Um, that, you know, no people means <laughs> no danger of anyone getting hurt. So that means he can stay there. Nothing too terrible will happen. Um, <laughs> I bet Red has been loving like the pandemic quarantine thing because nobody wants to get near him. He can't really get sick. I mean, he's already sick enough. Um, so yeah, he's just like social distancing, dude. This is like the best thing ever. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's uh he's probably just ex uh, they're probably just exploring. Uh, sorry, and they're by the way, it's they them, but I'm gonna keep saying he because I'm terrible at pronouns. I'm really sorry. Um, but they're uh, probably just exploring the fairgrounds and just getting any food he can find. Uh, mm -hmm. Exploring, just just really just enjoying the loneliness that well it, it's a double-edged sword because he wishes there were people he could interact with but he knows that if he does interact with people they're gonna die so you know it's, it's the best he can find i feel you um <clears throat> i mean i'll tell you that if you've been here a few days you've definitely been able to steal some like popcorn hot dogs like you've been living off cotton candy and soda oh hell yeah um, it's a, it's been a veritable cornucopia. There is, we are, we're going to come to that next. Um, 
when so it's there also is probably using just facilities to actually bay themselves yes yeah. there but like so there's like a it's a it's a boardwalk right there's like a water park component so there are like showers <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably just like perfect for you um his first shower and who knows how long yes <laughs> oh. Yeah, so uh, you've been like, like living the life these past few days, and uh, mm -hmm. Oli's been, you know, relieved that okay, she doesn't have to worry about red for once. So she's been up in the office trying to, uh, you know, see if she can find anything use useful to help red out. Then she realizes, oh wait, it's Friday the thirteenth on Earth, isn't it? Isn't it? They can't be there today. Not there. Not right now. Shit. And so. Uh, Oli pops down to uh, Finney's, or whatever it was called, the Phantasmagoria, uh, as soon as she realizes and uh, starts looking around for Red. Okay, so um, Ollie, because of your position, I do want to let you know that you have a little background information. Um, oh, wonderful. So uh, the upstairs records are not entirely sure what happened here, um, but they have marked this specific part of St. Philbert's as like a hot spot. Um, mm. These are generally caused by some atrocity or like horrific thing that like mm. kind of is so like bad enough to like create almost like a magical stain on the area. Um, nothing has been like recorded as happening beyond like your usual bad luck occurrences like maybe a mm. bolt falls out of a post at the wrong time or something like that mm. but um this is definitely not the nicest of places yeah um i also wanted to let red know that they have seen a security guard walking around there is one security guard still working the park right now he's but avoiding it's... them like the plague he is an old fat gentleman by the name of Wilson. <laughs> and like when you it, can see him huffing and puffing. He takes one walk around the park every day. That's it. Whenever he sees Wilson, it's whatever he's doing. Stop, drop and run. Just just immediately. I imagine that at one point you like, you know, those giant displays of stuffed animals. You like shoved yourself back into. <laughs> no, not even like if, if he knows he's going to walk past, he's still going to run. You've probably care. learned his route by now. Yes, definitely. Okay. So, with Ollie All right. and Red both being seen in the carnival for fairground, I'm not even attempting it. Um, I do want you to go ahead and make... Way. Yeah, Arch Archimedes, before you give your stuff, go ahead and make me your connect the dots. Oh, thank you very much. 2d6, <laughs> yeah. Yes, 2d6 plus your sharp. So for the audience, Monster of the Week is entirely based off of a 2d6 roll. Um, I, as the keeper, will never roll any dice. All right, what's your sharp? Two? Two. So for a total of six, that is a fail. <laughs> um, <laughs> Monster of the Week also works on ranges of success. So just to reiterate, one to six is a complete failure. Seven to nine is a mixed success. And anything 10 or above is a complete success. Um, is normally good for me. My, oh, my physical dice are cursed. God damn it. So, um, you get no information for sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, so um, great start. I don't know Archimedes what I get to do to you as a result, though. Oh, Explain no. Archimedes. Yeah, tell me where Archimedes is, and then um, I will look up what's going to happen to you for that. So, as much as a skeptic as Archimedes is, he still gets these strange intuitions about weird things that are going on and in his past experiences that's brought ollie into his limelight Oli, and he's got a file on them same with red he knows the names he knows the legends and the fact that these people have appeared in this place this place that gives him these weird chills these sensations he's got to go investigate so he's on his way to investigate there now on this fateful night and he's just arriving since he's seen these two on the footage that he procures from Wilson. He has a deal with them him, to tap into security cameras. What did you bribe him with? Money. Food. Money? Just straight up money. <laughs> I oh God. Sometimes you go play Fortnite with him, like when he gets really bored at night. I mean, He's like a watchman, right? He lives people. there. He understands they need social connections, so he goes and reads paper, does crosswords with them. <laughs> 
spent time with him. That's the important thing. Okay, I like that. That's good. Um, so are you what? Are, so where? Like, are you headed over there? Like, you're headed. You you see red on the security cameras for the first time today. Like he slips, or they slip up and like fall into the view of a camera, and you're like, wait, what the fuck is that? Um, is that a hobo? Yes. Yeah, so- <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a very God. particular hobo. One of the hobos I have a I mean, file. Yeah, oh, by the way, yeah you, I forgot you have a file on him. Yeah. Just, just to reiterate, uh, Red is an androgynous Korean American. He has these tired, pain eyes, and their clothes are complete trash. Like, <laughs> just complete trash. Okay. So um, I've seen the hobo and the what, strange lady. He suit. can find it on just yeah. a new. You see my government-looking ass. <laughs> You see these men people congregating. Black. Yeah, and I go to investigate, yeah. so I'm assuming I'll be arriving just as evening starts. Yes, that would that is accurate. Um so and then that leaves us with uh Silver Alex. Tell us <laughs> Silver Alex. <laughs> Two words. I guess it's slightly better than uh fake Alex. <laughs> I I thought that would be nicer. I thought that would be a more mm. pleasant way to distinctify that. So yeah. what what are what are what are y'all doing? I mean, I'm probably thinking. Probably think I'd be kind of the sa- in the same boat as keeping an eye out on the uh, boardwalk as you know, being somebody who's very much into uh, all the different trails and trends. So mm-hmm. you see something going down, and you're, and and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go check this out. This looks like a this looks like some business. I have an idea. Maybe Oli was like consulting with Alex because she's trying to like get his help. Uh, with red Makes so sense. like i was at his place and i, was, I just got like, like a ping i was like oh no red why did you go there <laughs> and yeah maybe i'll angel wings us there that's good that's good that angel wings so for the for the uh for the crowd tell us what angel wings does let me find my angel wings Woohoo! There we go. You can instantly go anywhere you have been before or to a person you know well. When you carry one or two people with you, roll plus weird. On a 10 plus, you go where you want it. On a 79, you don't quite manage it. Either you all appear in the wrong place or you are separated. <laughs> so make and, me that uh, on, roll. Yeah, and on a failure, it's up to you, Steve. So I'm, I'm going to roll. Ooh, that's a three plus, plus one, but still, that's a failure. I here's what I'm gonna do because this is literally transporting you to the place where the adventure will happen. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I am gonna let you get there, but I am gonna hold on to that failure and remember it. Steve will um, remember this. Uh, Steve yeah. will remember this. Yeah. Uh, All right. I I'm gonna grab hold of that failure because I just want you to be where you need to be. Okay, so we get to the 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 boardwalk at least. I know what to do with it. Um. Archimedes, would you, how, what is your method of transiting here? Like, you driving, Probably taking a bike, walking. walking. Maybe a bike. A rusty, we'll go with a nice, rusty old bike. Well maintained, but certainly not presentable. Think silver in it part two when he <sighs> buys it from a shop again. Yeah, I know. I got you. I got you. All right, so you, you go outside and you're getting on your bike. Um, and you feel this incredibly strange feeling, like, down in your gut, right? It's like that feeling when you're at the top of a roller coaster and you look over the edge and you're like, oh, fuck! <laughs> and you feel your stomach just kind of bottom out for a second. Um, So this, like, overwhelms you and then you feel yourself kind of, like, get jerked up almost by, like, the back of the shirt. Um, and <laughs> Ali, Alex, and Archimedes, all three of you fall into a heap outside of the carnival gate. <laughs> the fuck? Oh. That was your hold. You grabbed a passenger. That was your fail. <laughs> Great. Oh, no, not this again. Great. Uh, it's you! You! <laughs> you. Yes. yes, hello. hello. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Uh, I will, I will uh, turn, turn into... into- I'll- I'll- I can change my clothes like in an instant to one different outfit. It's my casual mode. And so now I'm in suddenly I'm in sweatpants, a hoodie, and I have a selfie stick and I hold it up. I hold it up. <laughs> nonchalant. Uh, very casual. Very nonchalant. I'm like, 
The sister tell you. You, I. I, I feel it seems very. This is a faulty selfie stick. <laughs> I'm just. Hogwarts is freaking the hell out, just full stop, because he was fighting and now he's here. And what. This is a. It must have been a wormhole or so Ah! Just with a faint smell of brimstone just in his nostrils because he's not quite sure what's gone on, but it's something weird. It probably smells more like, um, like, like flowers and honey. Oh, how adorable. That works. Yeah. <laughs> I love the weird disposition here where I'm probably the most overdressed person in the entire group right now. It's perfect. <laughs> I mean, I'm in a very crumpled suit i i still wear a suit just a very crumpled one and obviously i recognize yeah. you alex because we've cooperated in the past not as friends but as at least business acquaintances because yeah, <laughs> alex is standing here in his you know tailored vest and pants and <laughs> yeah and looks like, like 40 on. years out of time <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is beautiful Ali's gonna pretend she doesn't know what's happening, but she has a minus one charm, so like it's very obvious that she's just like Fake. she's just waving the selfie stick around as if that will do something. Uh, <clears throat> Ali, I think uh, I think he's got it. He understands. Well, that's too bad. And I switch back. <laughs> Sorry for taking you off your way. You can leave now. I don't think I can. There's something strange here tonight. I need to investigate. No, you need, don't need to investigate. You need to get out of here. This is not a safe place to be at this moment. Look, don't you get started. I be mean, Alex, what, what do you know of this person? That's uh, pretty complicated, but I can definitely say that uh, Archimedes does know his way around. Uh, I've been with him in a couple scrapes. He's useful? Yes, of course I'm useful. Yeah, like I said, he's uh, we've, we've had a couple scrapes, a couple scraps, so I think he can help us out. Well, all right. If Alex trusts you, I... you can... Just be here, I suppose. We need to find Red. Come on. Okay, so and you are. Yeah, all outside the closed and locked gate. Um, and for dramatic effect, uh, <laughs> as you are finishing this conversation and approaching the gate, you see the sun finally fall down below the ocean, um, and go out of view, and darkness falls. You hear. Where did it go? Oh, man, I'm all out of cash. There it is. Just this little tone. Um, I will play it again because it was super quiet. Um, there we go. A little louder. Um, <clears throat> and then you hear, Welcome, one and all, to the St. Filbert's Boardwalk. Have yourself a groovy time tonight. Um, and then you hear music start up like the carnival was operational. Um, none of the lights come on, but uh, the carnival music does start going. Um, Red, you hear this inside. Uh, you hear the announcement. You hear the music. Um, and to you, what I said does not apply. Um, everything lights up around you. Like, the carnival just suddenly is on. Um, the Ferris wheel starts turning. The roller coaster starts going. You smell popcorn that's been, like, it smells like it's been in that machine for hours and, like, just permeates the air all around you. Uh, and you see people, sort of. They're not people as... They're ghosts. They're definitely ghosts. They are translucent. Uh, you can see pretty much through them. Um, and they are sort of just gliding around this now open fairground uh the first thing that you notice looking at them is that they are not wearing today clothing right like they're not wearing things that you or i would wear out on the street for the most part um 
most of them are wearing what looks to be like pretty dated clothing like you're seeing like leather jackets and like dudes with like white t-shirts like rolled up at the sleeve with like a cigarette pack like shoved in there uh lots of jeans um it looks like the 50s <laughs> what do you do <laughs> I can't hear you if you're saying anything. Uh, run. You run. Run. Just, just, I, I just see, I, Red sees this. Oh, oh, you're Alec, your, your internet is doing the thing again. Seizing. And, yep. Uh, no. Really, Maybe similar to the natural instinct running. And hide run and hide that is legit um so as you are running and hiding you the closest thing to you is gonna be um the teacup ride which is not on as of yet but as you sprint over into that direction it pff, it's on now um it is like mid turn and you see more figures inside the cups uh, looking around, your next closest option is going to be um, a bathroom. I do believe he's having technical difficulties. Yes, so while he goes and hides in the bathroom, um, we're going to jump back to the outside the gate. So, the three of you outside the gate don't see the carnival come to life. You don't see any of these figures. Um, you are outside the locked gate, but you do hear the music and you did hear the announcement and everything. What do y'all want to do? I mean, I would quite like to go check the lock. And how old and battered is it? Um, it's actually pretty darn new. Um, because this was recently put under new management, the front gate is one of the fancy new jobs that's like mag locked with a keypad. With a keypad, you say? Mm hmm. With a keypad. But uh, there is, like, the wall here that's probably, like, eight feet tall. Um, I don't even want to call it a wall. It's like a chain link fence. Um, there is, like, a line of barbed wire across the top, but that's more to keep out, like, animals than people, you know what I mean? Um, but it probably goes, like, 100 feet in either direction down from the wall. What do you want to do? Well, I actually... I was looking at my sheet i forgot to roll <laughs> you're, good. The man you're with, good i had the man with the plan so i just i just rolled that mm -hmm. so it's the plus sharp and i rolled the, the two sixes and i got a plus two for sharp oh shit you rolled two sixes okay so <laughs> yeah, I rolled two uh, sixes. <laughs> that's the best you can do okay i'm just going double checking the man with the plan so i know how you win um <laughs> Uh, read it out for us. All right, so make the plan. Beginning of each mystery, roll plus sharp. On a 10 plus, hold two. <clears throat> on a 7 to 9, hold one. Spend the hold where you need it to be. Uh, prepared and ready. On a miss, you hold the one, and you can decide where to place it. Okay, so you're going to hold three. Sweet. Because you've got the equivalent of a critical success. Um. So you can just basically like that hold means you can just toss a plus one into another roll. Um, you can use it for yourself or you can give it to another hunter. All right. So you have three points to spend how you please. Um, but let's like, it, let's just, yeah, that'll, you can do that whenever. So what do you want to do in this moment? What is your plan? Man with the plan. What is the man's plan? Well, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm the man with the plan, I'd probably know that we're going to the boardwalk i'd probably have access to the lock whether it was gotten illegitimately or legitimately is i guess anybody's concerned there so how about um you can say we can say that you are actually familiar with this manufacturer and you know like the override code okay so, so I imagine as Archimedes yeah. is getting his tools ready to hack the keypad, I just walk over and put in the override code. <laughs> and I'll just nice. glare at you with contempt and slight annoyance and just kind of fold my toolkit back up, put it in my pocket. 
<laughs> and just and walk they, out. The gate goes and like slides open. Um, and you have access to the carnival now. Good. What do you mean? Well, where red goes, bad thing usually happens. So, well, since things are changing in there, that's probably a sign. That's where they are. They are. Uh, let's go. I I just walk straight through the gates until I. I yeah. mean, how far is it until mm -hmm. we start seeing the ghosts? Is there anything we're going to see before then? Um. Yeah. So first, like this is so I'm like, the gate that you were dealing with right now is more like uh the like outside like furthest moat moat like furthest most outside gate um but as you cross in um like the further you approach like what would be the ticketing booth right you know what i mean which is only maybe 50 feet away it's not far this is the animal fence um <laughs> you see more and more of these lights coming on inside the carnival like it's like when you're outside and you see the stars all coming out like point by point by point by point like first you see the ferris wheel light up and then you see like lights on top of a big top and then you see um like the the row of uh food stands and stuff light up and as you do like you hear start to hear like chatter of people and eventually when you get to the ticketing booth like the whole thing is straight up open um or so it seems the ticketing booth however is empty wilson must be testing the circuits i mean that wasn't due for another couple of months, maybe. But he never even does it normally. Oh, weird. Whatever. I mean, yeah, it's probably on. red. That's my guess. <laughs> or maybe it's just... Well, it's not a good day to be mm -hmm. here. It's... You don't, you, do... you don't want me to go into detail wow. on this, honestly. Who are you again? I, I look at Archie. Right. I'm Archimedes. You you may not know me, but I know you. Well, Why? I was like quarterback. You were there. And a couple of other times you've been there. You're always on the fringes. You're always on the edges. I mean, Alex, how... Why do you know her? Oh, that's a bit of a complicated story there. I think uh, the best way to say is... Let's say I knew her once, and then I knew her again. We were oh, classmates. Stupid. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, um, and I look um, like about you know twenty years younger than Alex. <laughs> that kind of he kind of twigs with Archimedes, he pulls a funny face, and then just carries on regardless. I mean, eh, Alex is probably just taking a class, you know. Senior learner, what is it uh, when you come in later on? Just, yeah, he was just taking the class, it's fine. No issue. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Um, so, all right, yeah, Alex, you good? Um, I want to I wanna catch back up with Bathroom Man if we have a second, if he's good. Um, he's typing something to me, he's doing it while we're doing that. So, you, as you, I'll just keep going. Um, okay, great. So you go to, hang on, let me find my focus again. Perfect. The three of you at the ticketing booth. Um, the main gate behind the booth, like the decorative gate that would allow like guest access into the carnival itself is wide open. And as you are having this conversation, you look through the gate, you as well now see these ghostly figures kind of moving about through the various aspects of the carnival um, and the attractions and stuff. And you can see that like the carnival is fully functional inside or so it would seem. <clears throat> what do you want to do? Are those hol holograms? They, they never used to have holograms. They're, they're not I'll holograms. Slowly walk towards one of them. So I, th I think it's a little early for the Halloween... Uh... <laughs> Plays. Can I roll weird to see if I know what's going on here, mm. or should I? Yes, go ahead. Um, let me see if you might have. I'm gonna look at your sheet real quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll just plus weird. I wanted to. Yeah, ask, terrible roll like... again. Uh, so that's uh a four, no a five with my plus one, but uh. They're ghosts. You can do know yeah. that. 
Um, I Alex, what were you saying? Ask, um, just because I forgot I had this, is, am I able to roll a hunch while I'm running and hiding? Uh, yeah, I believe so. It's when something bad is happening or just about to happen somewhere that you aren't. See if there's maybe something. Yeah, so, go for it. All right, so roll. What you got? So it'd be 2d6 plus... Sh oh, okay, there it is. I got an 11 total. 3 plus 6 plus 2. two pl okay, great. So you... Um, on a 10 plus, you knew where you needed to go just in time to get there. Um, hmm. I have to think about how I want to deal with that. Okay, so your hunch tells you that the main gate is where you need to be right now. That's like, and you need to go there okay. right now. The back of my mind is telling me, get the hell out. I'm gladly getting the hell out. <laughs> okay, so you start tearing ass towards the main gate. Um, Ollie, yeah, your role, unfortunately, you know these are ghosts, but that's kind of it. Um, you yeah. have no idea what would have tied these these spirits here you have no idea you had no idea that this would happen coming here so you're just as surprised as they are i would assume yes this is not supposed to be happening well it should never be happening honestly this is kind of exactly what your organization does right is dealing with shit like this yeah and i'm still a bit new so i don't really know all the <laughs> all the inner workings of things it's all good it's i all think that's probably why good. they sent you Mm. What were you saying, Michael? That you don't have all the protocols. <laughs> um, so while the three of you were standing here, like regarding these ghosts, Archie, you said you were approaching one? Yeah, closest one. Closest one. Um, okay. So just inside the main gate, there is uh, like your classic boardwalk circus promoter dude, right? A uh, tall, spindly guy wearing like the red and white like you can just make out the distinctions of the colors against like the kind of translucentness of himself these red and white striped suits and he's got like the straw hat and like the bamboo-ish cane you know what i mean and like the big mustache <laughs> um <clears throat> and as you approach him i assume like tentatively cautiously uh he goes, well, step right up, step right up, step right up. Come one, come all for another fun night at the St. Philbert's Boardwalk. Can I approach him, not address him, and just try and put my hand through him? And I yeah. want to not, not on purpose, but I want to accidentally try and banish him with weird. Okay, so Swift roll for forward. that. But you totally can like just like swipe your hand through it. Um, pl oh, plus eight plus two, that's ten. Oh, that's a complete success. Yeah, so, as I push my hand through him, there's a crack of something, a spark leaps from my fingers, and he's vanished. Just, mm -hmm. what, must be a faulty circuit in the hologram. I mean, how did damn, you do that? I mean, obviously, it's not used to touching. It's not built for physical contact, so try not to bump into when you, when you walk past, okay? We need to go find that thing that I saw on the camera. That was a ghost. Are you what aware you of that? A ghost. That was a hologram. There's Aren't no you supposed to ghost. be knowledgeable about this kind of thing? Yes, and I'm the only sane one. I put up with Alex's eccentricities because he's damn good at what he does. But there's no such thing as ghosts. It reappears. I don't know how many things you get mixed up in and why you're always there when weird things happen, but there's no such thing as ghosts. Yeah, as you say there's no such thing as ghosts, it, it reappears. <laughs> Faulty circuits. Jesus. What? Just, and I, it says, come one, back. come all. Step right up for another glorious evening at St. Philbert's Boardwalk. Help yourself to some popcorn, get some cotton candy, enjoy the roller coaster, take a fabulous walk with your sweetie on the sands. <laughs> and he like twiddles his mustache. Does the ghost seem to be aware of us or is it just like talking to the masses? More? No, it's like talking to you specifically because y'all are like the closest mm. ones to it. All right. Interesting. 
can I kind of step left and right and see if he follows us with his gaze? Yeah, he follows you. And he actually looks down at you and he goes, Hey there, fella, look like you spent a little too much time on the swings. Maybe take a walk down the boards and get your feet right. Well, that's interesting. Um, I take a few steps back. Come on, we should go further in to see if we can get all this switched off. It's wasting power. <laughs> yeah, let's find, let's find Red. So as the three of you like start to walk further into the carnival, Red, you come tearing out of the back of the carnival, um, like full sprint, like through the line of food stuff, like hot dog stands, popcorn and all that. And just like <clears throat> into the main area where you see three regular looking people, not ghosts. Hello, what Red. Do do? Hello, Red. No, no. no. Do I recognize it's Ollie? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You recognize anybody that you would recognize. What are you two doing here? Uh, what are you, what are you two doing here? I'm here he's, to get he's, you. He's, he's, he's like back, he's like backing away as he usually does. Oh, Red, it's okay. It's, it's, okay. it's safe. Well, it's not safe right now, but it will be. We need to get you out of this place. This is not a no. great place for you to no. be right now. <laughs> No, 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 no. I can't. No. Um. I mean. I mean. Sure. Yeah. But um. No. I can't. Cause uh. I mean. There's no one around, right? There's just these things. Whatever these people are. Oh no. There's people. Oh, who's that? <laughs> I point at Archimedes. He's a friend of Alex's. Can I? Can I use my sooth feature? Uh, when I talk to someone for a few seconds in a quiet voice, I can calm them down, blocking any panic, anger, or other negative emotions. Uh, yes. So I'm just gonna like, uh, not gonna touch them or anything, but just be like, it's okay. It's going to be safe. We're here to get you out of here. You're not going to hurt anyone. I, I think it's going that, to be alright. I think when Ali says that, that, you don't know what it can do. You don't know what it can do. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll take up my shades this time, and now you can like see the glowing yellow eyes, and just look them in the eyes. Nobody is going to get hurt. We're getting we're getting out of here safe. You can't hurt these ghosts. They're already gone. Okay. Just a strange phenomenon. See, I think when uh, Ali says that Archimedes is Alex's friend, he kind of just shrugs. <laughs> At this point, I think Archimedes will also do a matching shrug. But at the point of seeing the uh, her eyes start glowing and Red start panicking, he's going to try and subtly draw his magnum and just keep it by his side, just cocked, but not threatening, just there. And it's George's, so that's totally... Isn't Archimedes in high school? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's George. It's the American South. You totally have a gun. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I'm not, I wish I was joking about that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Red, um, I'm going to, by the way, because we have Alex the player, Alex the character, I'm going to try to use character names as much as possible. When I say a name, assume it's the character name. So, Red, um, you do feel calmer. Whatever Ali is saying to you is is working. Um, like, you can feel it kind of combating against, like, the darkness that you carry around inside yourself, but it is, you feel calmer, you feel less panicked, you feel like you can take a breath. Okay. Okay. Um. You good? Uh, yeah. 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 Um. Uh. Okay. I'm still. I. I'm still gonna. Stay a little away. You know. You know why? But. That's okay. Um. So. I don't know what's been going on. I can. Say if, I. I don't know if it's me, but. I was just. I was taking a bath over by the umbrella water park thing, and then one of them just popped up, and then another one, and another one. So I just ran. I don't even know where the old old man is. I don't even know if he's all right. Uh, we should. Old man. <laughs> you know uh, Wilson. It, I I I know where he walks. I try to avoid him um as much as I can. Um, you also know where his shed is, like his his little like on site apartment that he lives in. 
I can point into. I, I'm not going though. I, 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 I. That's a that's a really bad idea. But I, I can show you where he is. Um, just, just don't get close to me, especially you two. And he points at the two normal ones. Fine by the humans. me. <laughs> don't call them humans. I'm human too, you know. <laughs> anyway, um. Anyway, uh, yeah, um, if I just just follow me. He like like backs away from a ghost that's like walking past him. Like he's still very paranoid. Um, but he um starts like, I can't even say he walks. It's more like a like a hurried jog sort of, but like it's like panicky. Um, it's like that speed walk. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he just speed walks, being very cautious, avoiding touching any ghosts. The crew to the shed, still keeping a distance, so he just points at it from a distance. Okay, so as uh, the four of you now collectively are together, and you walk <clears throat> towards the back of the boardwalk park where uh, Wilson's shed is, you are interrupted <clears throat> by an intercom announcement. Um, this one starts with like that same friendly little tone that the first one did. The bling. Um, but <clears throat> you hear, what the fuck are you doing here? That does not sound like Wilson. No, it does. <laughs> oh, let me re let me let me <clears throat> let me do a little better job of that. <clears throat> what in the fuck are y'all doing here? Now it sounds like Wilson. It, and I just kind of look and try and find a new security camera and just be like, stick my hands from the air and wave. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Archie, Archie, I see you. What are you doing here? I stick a middle finger up since I can't talk to a camera. <laughs> no, there's intercoms. You know, go over to the, the cotton candy booth to your left. There's an intercom button that you can push. I go over and push the button and go, Wilson, what the fuck are with all the holograms? They're not holograms, kid. Something dark's going on tonight. Something spooky. Old they Wilson's taking ghosts. care of it. Before. Yep, yep. I see you got your friends here. Old Wilson's been dealing with this for years. So I just recommend you get on your stuff and you head on out of here. Red is panic eating cotton candy in the corner. Yeah, and tell your little sketch friend over there that I see him, and I see all the stuff that he does in the park. Old the, Wilson's hard to pull one over on. At we the know. mention of that, he instinctively ducks behind uh, one of the one of the sh little sheds <laughs> with cotton candy still in hand. He's like, oh, and just hides. Wilson, what do you mean something dark's going on? You, not you two, fuck's sake. Just speak some sense. What's going on? I am speaking sense. Listen to me. I've been watching this here block for a while, and you've been taking shits in a toilet. So you better damn well believe me when I tell you something dark is happening here. Something dark that happens every single time this happens. Things are going to play themselves out like they always do. Just make sure you get out of here now. So this, is ha this has occurred before. I'm going to like move over to the intercom. Yeah, that's what I... And who are you, miss? Well, My doesn't name matter. is Ollie. I am uh, an agent of Oopsie. What is, I don't know. That's made up. That sounds fictional, and I don't know. The Office of Protective Service Installments. No, that is a real thing, though I doubt you would ever have heard of it. Uh, this place is tainted. It's a... Uh, the fabric of reality is kind of weakened here. It's not a safe place for us to be. But I am curious, what have happened the other times when the ghosts uh, appeared? Are you, are you, are you like one of them X-Files folks? I really like that show. I, I binged it all during the during the Rona shutdown. Oh, I think I remember. Are that you show. like Scully? Are you like a Scully? Do you work for the government? Yes. Not yeah, your no, government, we... no, but the government of. She's a consultant. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like kind of pushes over to the yeah. side. Yeah. And who the hell are you? What are you doing, hanging out, kid? 
Uh, well, I I work regularly with the FBI around the area, and uh, he is a useful uh, informant for some issues around the city. So, met him on the way here. Um, all right, uh, this is getting. I still don't under. All right. I, I don't like this. I, I really don't. But you're telling me this is like an X Files thing, right? Like there's gonna be some. That's, that's probably the best. That's probably the best bet. I would. Uh, I'd probably get free and get out of here as quickly as you can. No, look. I'm, I'll tell you what. Back in uh, 1953, something went down underneath this boardwalk. Something the town's tried to cover up and forget about since that time, but. You don't forget a thing like that. I seen it. And so every every Friday the 13th, I shut down, find a way to shut down the park. This year, the universe did it for me so that no one has to come in here and see all this mess. Just stay away from the ghosts and please, for the love of God, get out of here as fast as you can. I snatched the intercom back. What was it that occurred that caused this? This is very important. I need this to know this information. Uh, I don't know what the particulars. All I know is that I saw them all go underneath the underneath the pier, and then they never came back out. Of course, it didn't help that we had the dolphin run. If you see the dolphin, you've been here too long, and it's too late. Dolphin. We don't, we don't have a dolphin. Uh, Alex definitely yeah, taking a note of the dolphin. With you here. We don't have a dolphin. Not yet. That's what I'm telling you is you need to get out before he shows up. That's what the one. So that's the dolphin. You can still find pieces of that information in the records in the library. I tried to get rid of most of them, but damn it, librarians are quick on their feet. A lot quicker than you think they are. See, uh... <clears throat> The dolphin was kind of an infamous figure about the same time. And after that, that night in 1953, he was never seen again, but he was one of the most prolific serial killers on the island. Wore a oh. full body dolphin costume the entire time. So we're not time. talking about an actual dolphin, just. He'd sneak up on his victims and go, It was that awful. Is, Haunting. That, that was a freaking a dolphin. Good dolphin impression. My mother used to tell me stories in that. When she was trying to scare me into being a good boy, she'd say, Wilson, you best be good or that dolphin's going to come up to your window and the last thing you hear is going to be... I kind of turned to the others and let go of Ian's come and just go, his mother was a tad crazy. All they found Red. underneath the boardwalk was a dolphin costume and a lot of blood. Well, thank you very much for this information. You have been very helpful. All right, so you're all going to get out of here, right? I'm not going to have to, like, leave the shed to come force you out. No, no these people are, are leaving. <clears throat> it's not safe to be here tonight. And he cuts off the intercom. I turned to all and just go, what do you mean, these people? You're leaving as well. As crazy as he sounds, Wilson does know what he's talking about when it comes to this place. We should go. Well... The office has no knows that something happened here that changed that changed this place, but we don't know exactly what. Now I actually have a lead on what could have caused this. I'm going to investigate further. Um, well, you can still see the main gate from where you are, by the way, and it's shut now. Uh -huh. However, we, however, we do need to get you people out. It's not well, safe you for you to be here. You got me here, you can get me back. But, I mean, Alex will vouch for me. You have a mystery of a need solving. I'm in need of a job. You're working for an office. You investigate the same kind of things I do. What to say I try and help you out on this one? You do owe me for dumping my bike in the middle of a road and dumping me here. That is fair. Um, I can... Take, I could take two people who would like to leave and get you out of here. I could try at least. Not, hopefully not grabbing any more passengers. Uh, Red, I, I imagine you would like to get out. 
Um, I, 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 um, I think they should go just because I'm here. I personally would rather end whatever's going on here than to have it keep happening every year. So no one is leaving. Appears so. So we might as well go investigate the boardwalks. I mean, it's not like you can go anywhere else. All right, then. All righty, then. So you go to, uh, you leave the shed behind and head back towards, like, the main area of the boardwalk. Um, Let me bring us to uh, a different screen here to signify that. Um, Kitty cat, that's a blind. Stop it. Um... (laughs) So, uh, as you walk into, like, the main carnival area, which, again, is now, like, completely alive, uh, you see these ghosts walking back and forth. They're riding the Ferris wheel. They're taking advantage of the hot dog vendor and the popcorn and the sodas and everything. Um, And they seem to be enjoying a fun... However, uh, I'm going to give this one to... See, this isn't D&D where I would ask you to make, like, a perception check. Um, if I everybody... mean, I, I imagine we are, like, you know, looking around, trying to, like, figure out what's going on, so... Yeah, 100%. So why doesn't everybody roll me plus sharp? Whatever your 2d6 plus sharp would be, go ahead and give me that. These dice! They're going in dice jail. That was a five, and I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> five. <laughs> Uh, eight, eight total. Shameful. Eight. Oh, eight plus two, ten. Ten. And then also, what? No, oh, um, just reminding people to mark experience whenever you roll a six or less. Yes, I. That is a great point that I forgot. When you fail a roll, you get experience. Thank you, Mandy, very much. Um, when you fail in Monster of the Week, you get an experience point on the bottom of your sheet there. So, if you failed any rolls, you get yourself some experience. Thank you for reminding me. And then <laughs> I just noticed I'm very close to leveling up. Excellent. <laughs> <It's already. laughs> um, okay, so uh, everybody that got any variety of success for that, um, off on one of the, like, the way that you're walking through the park, you still have, like, a pretty good field of vision. Field of vision. My cat is just, like, refusing to stop fucking with the blinds. Um... You have a pretty great field of vision ahead of you. Uh, None of the things here, aside from, like, the tractions and rides, are, like, actually tall. But off on one of the far walls, you see what look like more solid figures coming over the fence. That is... Maybe six? Good. I kind of raise the magnum and start hopping in their general direction. Okay. So uh, everyone else, um, Ollie, I know you failed your role, so you yeah. would definitely just see Archimedes like pull out the gun and like start advancing towards this wall. Um, I think Red and Alex both you you both got successes of some variety, correct? Yeah. Then you see not you yeah, can't count the figures. You just see them coming over the vent. You see some darkness that suggests to you there is there are people over there. Uh, Red is taking the longer route. He's gonna go around, try to get a more uh, secluded slash advantageous point. And you see, he, uh, those who do see him, you see he's holding this really rusty but kind of big revolver. It looks like he just picked it up from a trash somewhere. And a uh, a really really crappy uh. It could have been a butcher knife, but it's been, like, split almost diagonally in half, so it just looks like some other type of kitchen knife. Um, we don't know, but it just looks like he's holding trash, but it's it, it can be lethal. Dangerous, Dangerous trash. trash. <laughs> trash. <laughs> I bet your raccoon would love it. It's the best, it's the great, it's the best trash you can find. Um, but, okay, so, uh, so is any... Go ahead, Ollie. Uh, well, so I don't have any idea why they are acting the way they are do i i'm just like well now that they've pointed them out you you can see these figures you still can't count them but you can make out there's something happening i pull out my selfie stick and 
holding it ready. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I, think, I think everybody's going kind of close, so uh, I'd probably get uh, my bag with my different voodoo like stitching on it at the ready. Fantastic. Uh, so you all kind of close, like cautiously approach these figures uh, getting like over the fence. Um, eventually all of you do kind of like sneak a little close enough that you can make, because they're not paying attention to like the carnival proper. There's one like individual that seems to be facing you, like craning their head around, but they can't really like, they're just looking generally per probably Wilson because as you approach, you can see this is a group of six teenagers. Mm. Um, there's four do like four boys, two girls, um, and they are all like sneaking into the carnival. <laughs> um, and like you see, like the last last boy is like going over the fence, and he's this like scrawny kind of looks maybe like fourteen or fifteen year old kid. Um, Archie, you would know these kids from school probably do i know their names or do i just recognize them uh yeah let me grab them right now um you know that uh because like i don't have like specific images for them i can describe each of them to you but like i don't have tokens i mean um you know that the boys are named bill jason uh will and simon and um, the two girls are uh, Aaron and Beth. Um, they are already over the fence. It looks like they actually were the first ones over because they look pretty impatient. Um, and the last one going over the fence is Simon, and he is, like, struggling to make sure that he doesn't, like, completely fuck himself on the barbed wire. And the uh, other boys are down at the bottom, like, making fun of him. I fire the magnum into the ground to get retention and then shout... Um, he, before yeah. you shout, he falls at the sound of the gunshot. He just rolls over the fence, like, and in, in shock, and like falls the rest of the distance. And the rest of them all jump. Well, that could have went a little smoother. There's no time for smooth. You six, Bill, Will, Aaron, Beth. Jacob? You see, Will just go Jacob. cheese it, and um, they all just bolt. They oh, grab, oh like, they way. grab Simon and like drag him up from the ground, and they all just fucking tear ass into the carnival. Oh, that's... that is why you want to have a uh, smoother approach. <laughs> are they all running in the same direction? As soon as they can, they split up. Why? They, they all scatter. I, I, I want to see <laughs> if I can. I want to see if I can try and cause the. Whatever I can, just cause some malfunction in the carnival or whatever, to try and trap them, almost like bottlenecking them, so the only direction they can run is towards us. And, and wh what are you gonna try to? What are you gonna do that with? I want to jinx this. Okay. Um. Go ahead. So eleven. Eleven. All righty. Um. So. So yeah, uh, it's basically the interfere with what a bystander is trying to do. If they're trying to run away, just try to control the the disaster as much as possible, and without harming them, just block any other directions they can. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm just reading through the jinx rules right now. You can encourage coincidences to occur the way you want. When you jinx a target, roll plus weird and blah blah blah. On a hold ten plus, you hold two. Okay. Um, so I am going to take those two then, uh, cause yeah, so like, ahead. yeah, Alex has his two, has his three remaining from, um, man with a plan. So I'm going to take those two and give you two of the teenagers. Um, That's so fine. yeah, you hear, uh, they all split up and almost immediately though, you hear all of them fucking like kind of scream in unison because they also realize something is fucked up here. Um, and two of them come tearing back out. Um, Aaron and Bill just come like hurtling back exactly the way they came and like almost trip over you. Um, but for everyone else, yeah, you see four of them still in there. Two of them have come back out. What do you want to do? 
I'm just, I'm just swearing and cursing good in my breath, but it didn't go to plan reloading the <laughs> Yeah, so what are our surroundings red is like, right now? Yeah, Red is looking at his hands and he kind of gives like a smile to Ollie, but he's still <laughs> terrified. <laughs> so yeah. your surroundings right now, you are on the edge of the park. Um, So it's still like ground here. The boardwalk part hasn't started. Uh, This mm. is like past... Um, You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't have like a carnival map, but we are going to do that. Um, I'm going to switch us over to... This this friendly little square, and I'm pattering so that we don't have dead air. Dead air is anathema to good radio production. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna make this rectangle to be the outside wall, and I'm gonna pick a different color, like green. And we're gonna say that the ticketing area is he- that's like the main gate. Uh, there's like another like more decorative wall that kind of goes like around here in the front then over here there's like the food stuff food stuff uh 20 map making with steve yeah and this is how steve does it real quick um there's like a tunnel of love over here there's like the teacup ride there's like uh fucking um ferris wheel over here so basically that's enough for now y'all are like over here kind of on the side of some of the attractions uh where the fence would be if that helps yeah that helps a lot thank you you're welcome um alex would be rummaging through his pockets um basically i want to produce a document that uh upon like really close inspection you could tell it's definitely a forgery but it's like uh, obscure enough that it looks like it could be like a government bureau like badge okay all right so if you um, want me to roll or whatever for that yeah let me pull for that look. um so you can use you can use one of your man's man with the plans okay yeah, yeah. um i think that would be a good way to do it and like we can say that you had one it's like you have one locked up just for when you need it oh um, so I assume on there it's, you know, it's like, just like PIB, it's like uh, Paranormal Investigation Bureau, um, trying to make it look official, but it's definitely not official. It is close <laughs> enough to fool a bunch of stupid, scared teenagers. Yeah, pretty much. It, it, it wouldn't stand up to really close inspection by a government official, but... So he kind of holds up the, the badge there and uh, I'm Ag- Agent Alex, we need you to get out of the park here. There is a issue with the park, and we're trying to clean it up. Um, Bill goes, yeah, man, there's, like, ghosts in there. Like, did it's, you see them? There's, like, ghosts! And, and Aaron's like, oh, my God, yeah, there's, like, ghosts in there. Like, oh, my God. Young man, <sighs> are you aware there is a pandemic going around? Fever being one of the symptoms. You may be hallucinating. No, I don't have the Rona. Oh, no, there's no way. Like, I don't have any Rona. Uh, we just, like, we've been trapped inside. Like, the schools are just starting to shut down. And we were like, well, before it gets bad, we're just going to, like, have a good night out, right? And she's like, yeah, we just wanted to make sure we had, like, a fun evening before we got, like, trapped inside and have to go to, like, ugh, FaceTime. I don't know when I decided she was a valley girl, but she is. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he's like, "Yeah, we're just having like some fun. We'll leave. We'll like go. We'll get back. Yeah, we'll just we'll just go. We'll just go." So good. Can, can get you, out of here. Can you can you get your friends to also head out there? Maybe uh, call oh text God. whatever. We're not going do. back in there. No, no. Just call them. It, let it, let it, them it. let them know to head that way. But we like didn't bring our phones. And he's like, "Yeah, why would we bring our phones? Our parents breakers." Yeah, this is exactly what it is. Our parents can, like, do find our iPhone. What are we, dumb? Yeah, worth a shot. Like, it's, like, the number one way to get caught now. Like, my dad told me, like, the day he gave it to me, he's like, I'm going to track your location all the time. And, yeah, I can't go, like, anywhere. Like, you expect me to come here with my phone and, like, not make an Insta post about it? Like, come on. (laughs) Beats me. I want to leave Steve to have a conversation between V6, but 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 yeah, we'll like just go. Like, come on, Bill. We'll just like go over to the lighthouse. There's no one there. 
And he's like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, and we're, like, not in trouble or anything, right? Like, you're not going to tell our parents. If you get out of here quickly, we won't. Okay. You might, uh, you might die. Red, shut up. And they look over at Archimedes and they're like, wait, aren't you that, like, AV kid? Aren't you, yes. like, don't you, like, do the production for, like, the school news? Uh, yes, I do the tech shit. Oh, my God, the graphics you make are, like, so cool. At this point, I just point the gun at them again. I go, this is not a prop. I suggest you move. Whoa, I just was like, she, like... I really like those graphics. I like the way they like slide in like that. And I feel like attacked. Come on, Bill. Let's leave this AV kid alone. <laughs> and then they like kind of just step back over to the fence and begin climbing it from the other direction. And I had thought I was weird. That was a legit compliment. <laughs> I was trying to like break a stereotype. And be like, she really likes your graphics. Maybe she wants to go into journalism. Huh? Did you <laughs> think of that? <laughs> at Argy this point, like Archimedes is just shaking. He's holding the gun really nervously because he can't do social interaction. And he's just freaking the hell out. Like, uh, just... Should I soothe him? <laughs> you can soothe him. Oh my god. The kids are leaving. It's alright. Wait, I gotta take out the glasses. Don't worry. Let's get to the bottom of this, okay? I, it, it, sorry. And they just kind of like wave as they're going back over the fence. Um, but as you kind of like lose sight of them, they eventually make their way back over and leave. Um, you turn back to the carnival, uh, and one of the ghosts is actually walking out of like the mass throng um towards you like directly towards you seems to be directly aware of you uh this is he's wearing like a white t-shirt and jeans um he's got the cigarette pack like shoved into his sleeve rolled up around it um he's got like the hair that's all slicked back like oiled into place um and he's like kind of holding a comb in his hand that he's just like Looks Making kind sure of it's like set. Here of people, Alex. Do you want to? <laughs> um, but he is walking towards y'all. Does he look aggressive or just like interested? He looks interested. He he looks like he is aware that you're here. Um, hmm. and he comes over and he's, "What are y'all folks doing here today? This is no time for a uh, drop into the carnival." What makes you say that? Well, there's going to be a rumble later. Big one. And uh, you don't want to be anywhere near that. Especially with the dolphin out and about. A rumble, you say? Yeah. There's going to be a big one tonight. Seems the... Uh, seems Rita's brother isn't taking too kind to me hanging around. But I ain't going nowhere. And if this is the way it's got to be, this is the way it's got to be. You're going to fight. Mm-hmm. You got to fight for what's important. I just want to make sure that nobody that doesn't have to gets hurt. It's about to fret. Well, take it however you want there, Daddy. I'll just uh, make sure you get out of here. Oh, my God. This music is so funky. <laughs> well, we're actually here to ensure that people do not get hurt. So you don't need to worry about us. You, uh, do I smell bacon? And he looks uh, suspiciously at you. <laughs> Smells like a pig, huh? No, I think no, that's you. Cop, you have to tell me. Oh, I'm not, I am not a cop. He looks I very suspicious. Police. Well, uh, sure. Well, I'm gonna, you, you best hit the bricks. I'm not going to warn you again before it gets out of hand. Um, and he Thank starts, he warning. moves to make a way. Okay, so that's another one of the dolphin. Are we going to check under the boardwalk or what at this point? Um, well, so at this point, I um, think it would probably be advantageous to take gonna... our quick intermission. 
because we are at 11 30 so i think let's take a quick intermission um be back in 15 or so and uh pick up from there how does that sound beautiful sounds good all right we're going quick intermission everybody thanks
and we're live and we're back from our brief intermission with more monster of the week boom um so to quick recap uh you kicked two of the teenagers bill and aaron out of the carnival they have left over the fence they came in on um and there are four more still in there and one of the ghosts actually approached you and gave you a warning to leave before there was a rumble later. So, yeah. what would and you like since, to do? Since he almost called me out for being... The being, fuzz. Uh, the fuzz, yeah. I'm going to switch to casual mode again. Okay. <laughs> it's legit. <laughs> so Ollie switches back into sweatpants. Yeah. Um, what about the rest of you? What do you all want to do? I mean, at this point, we're stuck between either looking under the boardwalk for the dolphin costume or <laughs> trying to find the remaining four. And I'm not quite sure which is going to be more awkward for our Archimedes. So. Um, so, so you're in a holding pattern then to see if other heads make a decision? Basically, yeah, because he doesn't want to do yeah. either, particularly. Haunted, well. Dolphin costume is just too weird, and over four people social interaction. No, gotcha. Yeah, so we got four teams to hunt down. We got a potential, the ghost of a serial killer maybe on the loose. We know there's one somewhere around here that something happened, and it was bad. And there's the rumble with the the t-shirt guy and Rita's brother apparently. So we got some things going on and yeah i think first priority will be to get the kids out don't you think yeah no, red is just looking in the direction of where the other kids ran and he's just like being extra paranoid and i wanted to ask a fellow keeper if i could roll another hunch um sure go for it can't think of any reason why you couldn't. That's a 14, baby. Fucking oh my God. Your God. rolls. Heck. Wow. Your Damn. rolls today have been amazing. For the um, lucky fellow, Red is very lucky. Yeah, jeez. Okay, so um you fuck a duck. Um you get the feeling that you are needed at the very um, that that's there is something going down there. Um, as you get this hunch, who is closest to the fence area? So, um, yeah, because that would have been right where we got the kids uh, sent off to the side. So, okay, so Ollie and Alex, um, if you're like looking back at like Archie and Red towards like the main area of the park over. Uh, it's the wrong button. Um, like over this direction, mm -hmm. uh, you see a new figure step out of the shadows of the main gate. Um, and when I say like step out of the shadows, I mean that literally. Like you see the shadow cast by the gate from all the lights and stuff and like the floodlights that are looking down over like the parking lot the outside. And you see like just form out of these shadows a dolphin. Um, and it is carrying a massive and you know how Alec or Red was like, yeah, I have this butcher's knife that I like found. Um, mm -hmm. this is a much more intentional butcher's knife. <laughs> and it's huge and it's got some blood on it. Um, and the dolphin just like looks its head both directions. And I'm guessing I'm assuming it's a dolphin suit. Yes. It is like <laughs> a like a anima like a not I don't want to say animatronic, but like a like a dolphin suit. If you're um, mask, pull out your dolphin impression again. <laughs> Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Can I, can I read a bad situation? Yes. Good. What's with these rolls? That's a four. Oh, did you get an improvement? improvement? Uh, not yet. Next time. So uh, we uh, level up. I think uh, I, def I definitely want to do the same at that one, but good lord. Yeah, that's uh, uh that's yeah. rough. So uh 
So it what do you when you read about the situation? Is there like a? It only uh, says what happens if you succeed. Like at okay. ten, on ten plus you hold three. So, um, seventy nine hold one. I think you get to take a hard move. I get to take a hard move, and the hard move is um, hold on, let me refresh roll twenty real quick because it seems like we're having some problems. Um, one second. Uh, the hard move that I'm going to take while I'm doing this, is Dolphin notices you, and you all hear uh, every all four of you, <laughs> and the dolphin begins advancing towards you. Jesus fucking! What was that? And then I kind of because obviously I was just to the side a little bit. There we go. So I didn't see the dolphin come out of shadows originally, and I just kind of peek around the corner to see that coming towards us. And I just thought, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it is it is moving at uh, what I'm going to call the traditional serial killer speed, uh, cinematic serial killer speed, which is slow and plotty. Um, Wait, what are you saying? You cut out for me for a sec. Okay, sorry. So it is moving towards you in the traditional cinematic serial killer speed of slow and plotting and. Great. Moving with murderous purpose. Um, so me and Alex are like, it's closer to red, right? So, um, yeah, the thing is coming from this angle. Um, give me one second. Uh, and y'all can tell me what it'd be. It's like coming down this path. Mm. Um, and right now I would say it's still probably about here. It's not running towards you. It's like... It is stalking you. It's the Jason walk. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right. I'm just gonna instinctually, like, move to, like, I don't know how to locate, but, like, right at the end of that line. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to put, my, put myself between the dolphin and the others, and I'll turn my selfie stick into my two batons, like, into a staff, and then, like, lift that. Okay. Oh, the black video badass move. I like it. Um, uh, I want to stand right next to Ollie. Okay. You know and... that. You, I mean, your hunch is still telling you Ferris wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And. Oh, wait. Ferris wheel? Is that what you said? I couldn't That's, hear you yep. last time. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. That was the hunch that you got with going. I. I. Well, then uh, I said I'm, I. I. Uh, I just look at the situation. And then I want to try and grab Ollie from, like, grab Ollie's shirt and pull him with me to the Ferris wheel. What okay. are you doing? Ferris wheel. <laughs> right now, something's not right. Forget about the dolphin. We need to get there now. All right. All right. Let's go to the Ferris wheel. How can we forget about the dolphin? It's right fucking there. You're giving people take priority at the moment. Trust me. When it says there's something wrong, there's definitely something wrong. So I'm definitely going to uh, start heading towards Ferris wheel once he vocalizes it. Okay. Yeah, and we're going around, so we're not going towards the dolphin. We're moving around, around these. Okay. So oh, it, the as, as you all me. four, oh, what'd you say? In the stands near me, you know the intercoms, can they um, broadcast uh, to, do we just broadcast to the shed, or do we broadcast through the whole... Space? They'll go to the shed. Right. Um, can I dive in the booth while these lot moving? Uh, try and call Wilson. Just see. If yes. He's Absolutely. Wilson. Wilson. That's a what are you? What are you dolphin. still doing here? I told you to get out of here. Yes, I know. That's not important. V's lot are screaming about the Ferris reel, and there's a fucking dolphin. What's going on? Oh no, not the dolphin! Don't let him get you. Don't let him. And then you hear. <laughs> oh heavens! It's too late. You have to run. And at that point, I will uh, check, scream by and dive towards the Ferris wheel. <laughs> okay. Um, so the four of you hustle off away from the... Which, as you start moving, stops and just watches you. Um, it, does, like, it doesn't make a lot of effort to chase you, it seems like. Um, but it lets you go, and the four of you dart off towards the back of the park and the Ferris wheel, which we're going to say is right... Uh, right. We're gonna say that the Ferris wheel is over here on the actual boardwalk part. Um, so your path would take you uh, directly if we're using traditional coordinates 
directly north. Um, <clears throat> so you <laughs> sprint off all four of you toward the Ferris wheel, and um, you see that like there are ghosts around it. Um, there's a few on it, and there's also what looks like a teenager on the Ferris wheel um, at the top. Uh, the Ferris wheel has stopped moving at this point. Um, and the boy up there looks like he's starting to freak out. And he, like, sees the four of you approaching, and he goes, help, please, somebody, come on, please, this isn't funny anymore. Can you get me down? So is he a solid kid or ghost kid? Or solid kid. kid. He is a solid, solid kid, kid sitting in uh, with a ghost lady. So is he one of my classmates or yes a new one? this is um jason so i'll jason. probably try to go to the controls see if okay. we can okay. get it to move okay um archie what were you saying i was just shouting at jason to see uh just to see if he responds just like jason what the, what the hell are you doing up there I do... oh you're that av kid uh yeah th th these weird dudes in jumpsuits shoved me up here they put me on the Ferris wheel and they turned it up and they, this I wouldn't this is where they were gonna keep me until I don't know I've never seen it before in my life it's just weird shaved heads and black jumpsuits jumpsuits oh okay well with me being an AV kid can I go to the panel with um, Alex and try and weird it into life because I want to try I don't want to know when I'm using magic but see if I can spark some life into it with weird. Uh, so the two of you together can definitely try to make some progress on it. Um, you, If you, both of you would like to make me some variety of role. Um, well, so here's the way we're going to approach this. There is an action called help another or help out or something. Mm. Um, so if y'all decide who's going to do the thing and who's going to help. Um, and that's the best way to go about this. Does that make sense? Mm, what exactly are we trying to do? So they are trying to restart the Ferris wheel to okay. get it moving. I'm yeah, trying I... to um, subconsciously use magic to do it, so I'm not. I'm just going to try and get it to work, and some intuition will hopefully spark into life. Well, so, so I mean, I take... Alex is Alex is there as well. Uh, who was he was already on the panel before. So, which I mean, by uh... all, and I should be helping out while Alex tries. So I'll yeah, try. Work. Let's let Alex, let's let do Alex try first, and then you help out, and then if it doesn't, we'll flip it. I mean, that's mm. the best way I think to handle this. So, Alex, if you would roll plus um where is like my big list of moves fuck every duck um hang on all this hatred towards ducks ducks are creepy man uh, he doesn't like birds i've learned i'd I rather i'd rather have ducks than geese if you got a problem with canada gooses you got a problem with me and i suggest you let that one marinate um I like birds. i'm glad somebody does i know lots of people birds okay yeah, so yeah, uh alex roll me investigate a mystery or act under pressure i guess roll me an act under pressure uh what is that please? that's gonna be plus cool all right i'm super not cool <laughs> <laughs> uh it's an eight total Ooh, eight total okay so um and then uh archie roll me um help another which is I got eight. It's a cool help out is cool. Um, so you get to hold one. So you get a success. You get a success. You get the Ferris wheel moving again between the two of you. Um, like Alex is like messing with the buttons, and Archie's like, "Well, maybe if you just tried flipping this switch, and you don't know what you're doing, like subconsciously, there is something telling you what to do." Um, yeah. and the two of you together get this thing like flipped on back to. Um, and all the ghosts on the Ferris wheel like cheer and shout and hooray, and they're like, "Oh, yay!" Um, and the thing starts to spin again. Can um, I, keep, can I yes. keep an eye out for the dolphin in the meantime, so that I can... absolutely. Uh, so you are keeping. Then Red, what are you doing? Red is also revolve around looking around for that dolphin. <laughs> That's legit. Um, that is legit. So you keep an eye out for the dolphin, the two of you, um, and you don't see it, but you, as the Ferris wheel starts to get moving, um, you see four black robed or black jumpsuited figures 
uh, coming out from the mass of ghosts in the carnival. Um, and the first one stop, like stops as he notices the four of you kind of at the base of the Ferris wheel. And he's, who are you and why are you here? Why do you interfere with our plans? That is none of your concern. Leave the boy where you found him and go, lest we get cross. This boy is an innocent civilian. He should not be here at this time. Who are I, you? Identify yourselves. His innocence is why yeah, he's on mode. the Ferris. And he he like audibly like he, as you're like identify yourself, he like audibly like leans in or leans into you and he audibly <sighs> you have the stink of up. Leave this place or you will never return to your pretty little city. This is your only warning, and it goes for all of you. Leave the boy and go. We, I'm afraid we can't particularly do that, um, but I raise the magnum to his and point it towards his forehead, trying to be brave and cool. <laughs> yeah, I have my, I have my staff, I have my batons ready. Red is yeah. also aiming his revolver, but unlike Ark, his is shaky as hell. So, so um, are these guys solid or ghosts? That's the question. They are solid. They are yeah. they are solid. Yes, they're human. Or are they? Yes, they are human. Um, so do you have some kind of? Let me look at your sheet real quick because you might have something yeah. for this. Um, I think. Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, you could make a cast out evil roll if you so wa- wished. I would love to. You could totally do gonna that. I'm going to use the roll 20 dice because I don't <laughs> trust my own. They have betrayed me one too many times. That is I, fair. I think um, I just put my sheet away accidentally. Yeah. All right. While you yeah. are rolling it, I'm going to read it out. Uh, cast yeah. out evil. You may banish an unnatural creature from your presence. Roll plus tough. On a 10 plus, it is banished. On a 7 to 9, it takes a little while for the banishing to take effect. Um, Do we still even... have a plus one forward from before? I believe I still... You should have two. Alex have has two, two I think. And then I think you might have one. Yeah, go ahead and you can use that plus one. Okay. Oh. The roll 20 die betrayed you. You got... Oh, twice in a row! I level up. You level up, but yeah, unfortunately... um, it you like attempt to to do your thing, right? Like you attempt to cast out evil and it just like stares at you this this person in the front and <sighs> must we do good. this the hard way um unless you back it down it seems like it and he looks up into the sky and he <sighs> except like way louder and way more piercing of a whistle um mm-hmm. and he turns to leave as like four more cultists come out of the I'm going to call them cultists, come out um, like of the carnival. So you have a total of seven here. That wasn't a dolphin call, was it? Um, uh, the Ferris Holly. wheel is about a third of the way down. Holly? Yes, Red? You trust me on this, right? I do. Okay. You got this. Uh, um, once it happens, run. And Dread is going to drop his uh, He's going to drop his, his 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 revolver, put both of his hands on the ground, and he wants to try and summon a uh, a pure manifestation of the of the red disaster to try and attack these assholes. Okay. okay. It might bring in the dark side. What? I don't know. What what are you gonna use for that? It'd be use magic, and I want to also add a uh, uh, I'll add a hex. Okay. Uh, so that so in case, and possibly the last one in case they have anything, but or the, either the second or the last one, but let's see if the magic works. So yeah, uh, okay. Come on, you haven't failed me now. And I'm not going to say you will, but... 
It's weird, right? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yes, plus I just accidentally disconnected. There we go. Ah, uh, that's an eight, but that that's okay. Is... It works. It works imperfectly. It works imperfectly. Yeah. But he works. And then, and then, uh, plus a hex, whatever. But yeah, so it works, but something's bad's gonna happen. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna oh. run back, like, tell the others to get back, and I don't know, shield them in something. In so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just as soon as like Ollie starts seeing, I'm just gonna let whatever power I was controlling, I'm just gonna let it out. And just okay. try and summon something, attack. I don't know, just let it out. Perfect. Um. Okay. So tell me what this thing looks like. So this creature it's that red miasma that comes it's cr it's bloody crimson and you can see in this it, you can't really see a shape but you can see somewhere when within it there are these tentacles teeth eyes you don't know it's just an amalgamation of ethereal dark energy and flesh it's just this this it's a disgusting amalgamation of despair um, with the ter with a horrifying stench and this really bad sounds in your ears, you want to run away from it, um, and it just spreads like a like a like a like gas, and in that you see it spreading the the eyes and the teeth and everything, and it just lashes out at the first thing it sees, and I'm assuming that it that we are no exception. <laughs> This seems like it's going to go horribly. I can't hear Steve. Can anybody else? Hear yeah, Steve? it's 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 there an uncontroll it's an uncontrollable power that has been under control for too much, and it doesn't. And now that it's out, it's going to enjoy being out. Okay, so um, for your downside, you were going to take one heart from this. Fair. Um, yeah. So if you have any armor, it's going to ignore. It's like magical harm um this thing and you also feel like weak uh you feel like you just gave blood and this you all see this thing just kind of rise out of the ground um after red is like i'm sorry and it just the first thing it sees are these black jumpsuited folks and just like tears off towards them with this like <laughs> um and begins ripping the first one to pieces like it's definitely you know that, you, you, dead you know that scene in cabin in the woods when all of the monsters are unleashed imagine that but just one monster okay i feel that i feel that um it is uh yeah f fucking going ape shit on this one and the other cults like look at and look like look at the three of you and then they rush over to go deal with this fucking thing um the so the downside of this red aside from that uh one harm is that because this thing is like the source of your power um you will not be able to use magic until it returns to you that's fine i'm weak enough as it is and i don't want to do anything else when that thing is out that's fair yeah when that thing is out um you are you are kind of on like the low end of the spectrum uh so what about the rest of you um by the way jason is like sitting about halfway down the ferris wheel now like <gasps> like open jawed and shocked i i kind of see the red terror and i just instantly try and block it out something in my brain is telling me that is not natural so i try and avoid looking at it and i charge towards the furthest cultist from it and trying which is okay um roll me to kick some ass That's by the way red is probably just laying on the floor trying to like stand up but is really weak so ollie might need to help him yeah i'm <laughs> gonna move over to red and like be the i'm gonna take the protect someone action when time comes but for now let's resolve the, the kick some yeah. ass yeah oh oh man 
Archimedes getting rolled. Um, yeah, I knew he would. I just it felt just, more relevant. I feel you. You could have shot him. Um, Mark experience. Mark experience. Uh, yeah, you um, like rush up to try to grab this cultist, and he just like sees you and just like backhands you as you approach him. Um, so you're gonna take one harm and you're gonna get knocked prone. Okie dokie, thank you. Yeah, you're oh, welcome. You're... Well, he's uh, prone there. I think uh, Alex is going to go try to help him out. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull probably from underneath my coat. I pull out my, uh, my I carry a silver sword. Mm-hmm. So let's see what I can do to try to help him out or at least get this guy's attention. That's not good. <laughs> oh, yes. What you got? Uh, that's a four total. Whoa. Um, so Mark experience, um, he just like Sparta kicks you in the chest as you run up to him. Like he is so ready now after like seeing, like already dealing with Archimedes that he just like full on like boot to the sternum. Um, and you're going to take one harm and go flying. Um, also prone, uh, as y'all are dealing. And then, okay. So Ollie roll me to protect someone. Yeah. I'm going to use my own dice again. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's 11 plus 2. That's a 12 plus baby. Amazing. Okay, so you have him covered. Like, you fend off cultists expertly. Like, you know how, um, like, th there are a couple that are trying to deal with this, like, fucking thing that Red summoned, and you actually see a few of them, like, doing some magic to try to, like, fight this on more even terms. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, one of them has rushed towards you in red under the assumption that like you take care, you kill red, like the thing goes away. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but like you just crack this son of a bitch with the batons and he goes down like a sack of potatoes. <clears throat> awesome. You take no harm. Um, you were super ready for it. Um, but so as the four of you are like engaging this group and the, the, the demon thing is doing its business, um, <clears throat> coming out from behind the buildings, you again hear the, <laughs> and Jason's like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is going on, man? I just thought we were going to. Uh, how do, how do we explain this? <laughs> Don't worry about that for now. Just get down from there and stay safe. Don't leave this area for now. There's uh, a serial killer out there. But the, the Ferris wheel's still going down. Yes, but once you once you get down, okay? One thing at a time. I think it was right. safer with it up. <laughs> Fuck you. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> Eat my butt. We're doing our best. Uh so yeah, the dolphin you see come up and he just grabs one of these black jumpsuited figures from behind by the collar, knife, heart. Like mm -hmm. you just see him, the dolphin murder one of these jumpsuit dudes, like straight up, no hesitation, just grab knife. And you see it like twist its head around like so that it's Bill, what do you call the snout? The snout yeah, of the snout. costume is right up in its ear and you hear, <laughs> and he just dumps the body onto the ground does it seem to be going after only the cultists or just anyone uh that was just the first thing it saw uh-huh yeah i'm still i'm still w way on my guard mm -hmm. uh, I so how many cultists are left so there's the one there's there were seven to start with one of them just got murdered it's down to six um there's the one that you cracked that is on the ground right now he's not mm -hmm. unconscious but he's prone yeah. uh there's the one that was dealing with uh archie and alex and then there were four uh dealing with the monster um dealing with the 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 tentacle nightmare demon um <laughs> So, uh, at the sight of the dolphin, um, they look way more panicked. Than the, than the, the hong egg? Okay, good to know where their priorities are. Yes, um, 
in fact, they are actually the ones that were fighting. Say the name one more time so I can say it properly. That's why I haven't been saying it because I don't want to fuck uh, it up. Alex. Hongaik. Hongaik. Or, or the Red Disaster. Okay, the Sorry. Red Disaster. I'm just going to go with that um, because I, I don't want to offend anybody with my horrific pronunciations. Um, so the Red Disaster, the ones that are dealing with that have now made a decision. They leave their fucking buddy to it and they start bolting. All right. Um, it will grab one of them as they run away, but like, there's two running away now, and the one, Archie and uh, Alex, is also making moves to try to get away. We, I, can't, as I'm trying to get back up from prone, I notice that the goddess is not fighting me; it's running, and mm -hmm. I turn, see the dolphin, freak the hell out, and is it doing trying to do too much of one go if I try and shoot from the head with a magnum? No, you can shoot it. Or try to. Yeah, I'll attempt to shoot it. Is that still a tough one? No, that is going to be um, act under pressure. So, uh, kick some ass only applies in situations where you could also take damage. Um, ah. So, that's going to be an act under pressure, which is at a cool. Beautiful. Let's see. Nine. There you go. Um, that is good enough. Uh, you... Your like mixed part of the success is that you draw the dolphin's attention towards you, but you definitely make contact. Um, you don't get it right in the head, you catch it more in the shoulder, and you see it like recoil back a little bit with the blow. Um, and you have pierced the costume, but where you would normally expect expect blood, you just see this like black ichor kind of oozing out of its shoulder. You preempted all of my questions. Thank you. And it looks at you <laughs> and it goes. Ah! Who else is wants to uh, add? Alex, you got anything? So, um, I probably want to try to think what I've. What do you probably want to go for? Probably, you know, we know that it can take some damage, so I think probably go to hit the <clears throat> hit the dolphin. But I don't have magnums like all you fancy people. I have a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the old ways are best. Pull out like a nice sawed-off shotgun, <laughs> Terminator style. I love it. Fantastic. Okay, so um, act under pressure. So that is a, so that's a, active pressure is uh, cool, right? Yes. That's an 11 total. Ooh, yes. nice. Um, so what, how much damage does the shotgun do? I got three harm. <coughs> it's messy and loud. Yep, those are appropriate tags. <laughs> um, okay, so three harm. Um, yep. Uh, how much damage did the Magnum do again? It's free. two harm. I might say my magnum's free harm, close reload. Oh wow, lucky! That's okay. Lucky. Um, yeah. So yeah, you see the is it? I mean, so you want you can just tell me this either way: buckshot or slugs for the shotgun. Probably, probably be buckshot because I have the voodoo bag for my long range. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so you got your buckshot. Uh. And you see the costume get peppered with holes that also leak this black goo. Um, but aside from like the brief recoil of the impact, it doesn't look too phased and mm. begins to advance towards you. Um, because the two of you were relatively close, it's coming at both of you. Uh, I actually, I actually want to charge up there and kick some ass, some ass. kick the okay. dolphin's ass because. Uh, because I am I I'm divine and I have the smite ability. My body and divine weapons always count as a weakness, and I think that's what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna try to kick some ass. Yeah, that's another eleven. Excellent. Uh, yes. With plus two, so it's a twelve plus. <sighs> Great, okay. lovely. Um, uh, so for kick some ass, you get some special bonuses for that. I. 
Yeah, let me see where I can find kick some ass. That's what I want to do. Okay, That's choose one extra effect. Uh, I gain the advantage, inflicting terrible harm, suffer less harm for the person where I want him. I will inflict terrible harm on this. Okay. Um, so that would make it, what, four? Uh, yeah, we get four harm because it's a divine weapon. So oh, it's three harm. Fuck, okay. Next so, time. yeah, you, um, like, s smash into, you, like, grab the batons and you just, like, smash into the dolphin. Um, and it does look like it felt that one. Um, it, like, staggers backwards, uh, like, heavily away from Archie and Alex, um, and now turns its attention to you entirely. Uh, and you okay. see, like, this bright red glow, like, burst up from the eye sockets of this costume. Um, and it looks at you in, like, the loudest you've heard yet that, like, reverberates through the empty air. Like, the empty air, it just goes, like, <laughs> and it, like, begins to charge you. This is the fastest you've seen it move. All right. Is, is the monster, I'm expecting is to the, do some harm. Is the, the disaster monster, still? Yeah, the red disaster is still eating. Um, um, it is finishing up. Though. Okay, it's finishing up. Yeah, like it maybe has like what one more guy left. Yeah, well, it's just eating this one dude. Uh, it's okay. It's, if you I... want to try to weird it back into you, you can. Yeah, because I want to try and see if I can use a spell, and I want—I don't think he needs to be here anymore. Okay, so roll me plus weird. Nine. All right, perfect. Um, so yes, you are able to like force it back into you, your curse. Um, but you are going to take another harm as a. That's fine. Uh, but uh, I want to try and uh. It's clear that the dolphin isn't from here. Yes, there it's is not... there is non-human things about this dolphin. I want to try and use magic uh and try to either trap it or banish it. I don't know which one. Um cuz we saw the ghost disappear and then come back. So I think for now just trap it and just just put him in place. Um, and I'll want to hex it as well. Okay. So roll me plus weird. That's in eight. So, uh, so imperfectly, that's fine. Uh, and then I, I want to make it, uh, immediately suffer two more harm. Awesome. Okay. Magic ignore armor. And what would be the effect I get? Hmm. Uh... I'm trying to think on that one because so it takes two more harm. Um, yeah, it could be like weekend, short duration, one more harm, un um, unwelcome attention, or just some other side effect. Yeah. So, um, the side effect to you, you mean? Uh, no, the side effect of the the thing. I'm trying to. So, what you were doing was um, trying to trap it in place or like keep it from moving more, right? And then yeah, and then harm and it some more. So it's probably so it's probably like a minor summon of the hung guy just comes from under it and just starts like trying to crawl upwards, but it's more like keeping it in place. Yeah, let's go the with same time. Let's go with what tentacles or something. I was gonna say let's go with like tentacles that like grab yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that happens, it takes its two harm, um, and it looks like very confused as to its situation starts grabbing its knife and like hacking away at the tentacles below it okay so what would the effect be uh it is unable to move right now um, oh no i mean the glitch sorry not the, the, not the, glitch. the glitch oh that's, that's what I yeah mean. that's what i kept because i was that's what i thought you were asking um i have to look at the glitches real quick. yeah sorry no you're good uh, uh, it's weekend short duration one harm unwelcome attention or another side effect yeah that's the another side effect um so your glitch is uh an invocation of your dark side um okay. your dark side wants you to reverse the ferris wheel and send reverse. him back up okay so 
as that happens, uh, Ollie probably has noticed this behavior before. Um, mm. He starts crying and shaking in place. Um, and I will say that the visual I've posted for you guys to see, which for the one, the viewers back home, it's basically like these sort of like vein, not veins, but like this red, uh, these red vein like things surround him, like oh, not like on his body, just on his in general like area. And it just seems to like cover him. And he starts bolting to the, uh, the Ferris wheels, um, the Ferris wheels mechanisms. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the dolphin's humanoid, as in the costumed humanoid, but does yes. it look like um, whatever's inside is vaguely humanoid? Like, is yeah. there still the creatures you'd expect with a adult it, male inside the costume? It or looks is it fully stalled? Yeah, it all we can tell is bipedal. It looks like it's bipedal. It's and it bipedal has and two arms. Black goo. Yeah. yeah. With it being pinned in place by the tentacles, can I attempt to cut the costume open with my hand knife? Uh, yeah, kick some ass. Um, and I will give you a plus one on this roll because it's like... So, yeah, go ahead and do that for me. Six plus one is seven. Seven. Oh, yeah. Um, it's gonna whap you with like its flipper. <laughs> <laughs> that statement. Oh, I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna whack you with its flipper. Yeah, it's gonna whap you with its flipper. One. Um, but you are able to, yeah, cut it open. Um, and <sighs> what you see inside is less is not human for sure um like you're able to like get that knife cut it open and like, kind of rip open the costume enough that you can actually see what's in there and it looks like this black goo has just is just filling the costume right like you would fill up uh like a like a paper like a balloon with water uh, and it's just like oozing out in like big goopy handfuls now is it still Alive? Yes, moving? it's still ing and oh, up and and moving. Um, can can I try to cast out evil on it? Can yes, I, I want to cast this thing out. I don't want this here. Get it away. Cast from it me. out. Uh, that's eight plus two. It's a ten. You cast it out. Um, so with a final. Um, I, the I, good. I just wanna... Yeah, I want to put my batons back together and like just stab the staff like right into it, like yeah. hold it pinned while I banish it, and then uh, I twirl it, and it's just yeah back to you like. That's so much better. Battery. No, that was perfect. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, as you do that and you pin it to the, this goo like seeps out of the costume, um, like watching uh like something deflate like a like a water bed deflate right like it just. <sighs> pours out to the sides um and oozes into the ground um so while that's happening because they're keeping themselves busy and i have yeah. a job to do i would like to completely reset every the whole entire work that alex and arc did and on top of that, I want to destroy the mechanisms. That was going to be the next thing um, that was going to tell you to do is destroy the mechanisms. Yeah, I, uh. it, I, yeah. so he's just like crying and he's like yelling to himself, it's my fault, it's my fault, I'm sorry, it's my fault. Like just that kind of like negative self-deprecating mantra. And you see him just randomly press buttons trying to reset everything. And then once he sees the thing starting to reset, He's pulling out his cleaver and he's just cleaving every single thing off. Like there's like it's 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 maybe not be, be not maybe not broken beyond repair, but it's gonna. I don't think we are gonna have enough time to fix it. No. So you get an experience point for following your dark art, mm -hmm. um, and you succeed in doing what it wants but you didn't just send him back up to the top you completely broke the thing and now it is spinning way too fast and it won't stop oh god yeah i think and, we, I, and, and jason the, is after... screaming at you from the ferris wheel what the hell are you doing man fucking cut that out what the hell 
Yeah, no. After after that, you just you all he just sees like a uh, red like lean on, almost hugging the mechanism, and he's just crying, almost like oh. almost as if like asking a machine for affection or comfort. Just the first thing he can find, oh. and the veins are still not leaving around him. It's almost as if like tentacles yeah. are starting to wrap around, but it's like on the surface of his skin. Cool. It's the kind of like that. Yikes! All right, so that's what you see. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just like turning around from getting the dolphin away and just seeing this and i'm like oh no i failed again shit uh and i'm gonna where are the cultists are they they're still they ran they back leaving? into the carnival yeah, yeah okay, the ones that leaving. got away got away ran okay. or dead <laughs> they're run or dead okay red is my priority right now the uh, one that you bopped protecting red got up and ran away while you were okay that's fine. I don't care about them at all right now. Um, I'm gonna look to Alex and Archime Archimedes and be like, do you know how to stop this Ferris wheel? And like, try to get them to turn their attention to that while I run over to Red. What do you mean, stop the- What the fuck have you done? I don't know how these things work! Well, that's- the, over, over there, that's the controls. I don't know what- I don't know what we can do on the other side. I guess I'm going to go try to see if there's like a manual break or something I can try to get on the actual ride itself. Be a sharp to look for that, I guess. Is there yeah. an intercom nearby that I can call Wilson on? Um, yes, there is an intercom nearby that you can call Wilson. There's also an emergency break for sure. Um, I, got, I got a seven total. For what was the, what were you rolling? To look for that emergency break. Um, okay, so I'm going to call that Let's call that investigative mystery. What did you add to that role? A sharp? Yes, perfect. Um, then definitely we'll call it investigative mystery. So normally you get like the way that these skills work, like the investigate ones, is that there's like a list of questions. Gotcha. Um, um, and you're like, let me ask these questions, but I'm just going to, this is a very straightforward one, so I can just give it to you. Um, you find an emergency break. Um, however, you are also expert enough, expert, to know that, it is not meant to be used at this speed. You know what I mean? Like, it is, it, the, the Ferris wheel is probably turning twice as fast as it should. So it's got to, so uh, there is a break, but we need to slow it down because it's not going to stop it. Uh, stop it safely. Kind of It'll speed. stop it, but it won't be safe. <laughs> It may cause could, more harm than good if we stop it at this speed. We could use the dolphin costume, try and clog up the mechanism. Just stop throwing things into the spinning mechanism if we can get to it. Yeah, we could try to break that completely, whatever's making it spin to begin with. Could I could I read a bad situation? Yeah, absolutely. I will do Is so. my dark side still acting up? No, you you feel calm. Like I'm gonna say that I, I th you tell me if this is wrong, but I would assume that when you give into this dark urge, um, it's almost like a, an addict getting what they need, right? Like that just... <sighs> As a cigarette smoker, it's the feeling I have when I haven't had a cigarette in like a day, and I go I outside would, and I, I have a cigarette, and I'm more, like... Oh, I, I would say it's more like this, like... Like the best, I I personally don't know how it feels, but I feel like it's more like a bipolar. It's just like a flick of a switch, and you just become completely terrible, in the worst way possible. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think I cut myself off. Yeah, so it's like being bipolar. It's like one flick of a switch, you're you're terrible, and then you right back up again. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and like he pro like he probably sees this, and um. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. He's going to try and uh, use his magic again. Okay. And he's he's going to jinx so that if anything happens, he he it, it's a good benefit. So it's gonna be even hard. Well, yeah, it's gonna. I'm just gonna. He's gonna basically jinx. So it's not so it's not magic. It's jinx. Um, let me see. But just because. He doesn't want that to happen again. He's going to concentrate, 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 and I'm going to expend a luck point. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I I ha I'm holding two, um, 
and it's going to be for whatever any of y'all try to do to try and stop this mechanism. Okay, because uh, I rolled a 7 for read a bad situation, but I am gonna use a luck point to make that a 12 plus. Because uh, I want to ask the questions, uh, first of all, what's the best way to protect the victims? And second, what's most vulnerable to me? Um, the best way to protect the victims, for sure, is going to be to get them out of here. Yeah. Um, the thing that is most vulnerable to you um, are those cultists. Uh, the dolphin, for sure, can take yeah, a beating, I'm... but those cultists are the problem. Yeah, I'm meaning mostly like in order to get the first oh. one to stop. No, no, I should have been, I should have specified, but like mechanism wise. Yes, mechanism wise, um, there is. So the stopping the thing with the break isn't necessarily the stopping using the e break is going to stop it like hard and fast. Um, if you can like, there is. I'm trying to think of the right way to explain this. Um, the it's motor running it, the motor running it is going to be the most vulnerable thing. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of because the was... motor running it is going to be at the base, not on the actual part. Um, right. But if you take that out, you should be good to go. Yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping you'd say because I want to try to like just smash that m motor somehow, like with my holy weapon. Okay. Um, I am just give me one. I am trying. There are special. Okay, so for the divine. Okay. Um. There are specials. We are playing Monster of the Week with the Tome of Mysteries expansion. And mm -hmm. Tome of Mysteries adds special moves for when you use a luck point mm -hmm. uh, that I get to take. So, uh, Red was oh, the yeah. first one to use a luck point, right? Yes. And you are spooky? Yes. You, when you spend a luck, your dark side's needs will grow nasty. Yes, I know that. Okay, cool. Just wanted that out there in the world. Um, and then for the divine, when you spend yeah. a luck, you get word your mission requires something difficult that must be done by you urgently. Yeah. I'm going to keep that in mind, but I'm going to let you resolve the motor situation first. Okay. Yeah. So I'm... Would that be like a tough roll or something? Yeah. Just make it... Honestly, I'm going to use your luck. I'm going to carry your point forward. Um, it's an right. inanimate object. You can bash it up pretty easy. I um, will do so. Yes, you break this motor, uh, and everyone hears this, like, <laughs> like crunch, squeal of metal um, as the motor just starts, like, smoking and sputtering as, like, Ollie is just, like, friggin' wailing on it. And eventually, like, it gives this final you know, and ceases working altogether. Um, and you see that the Ferris wheel is, is beginning to slow down. Is that with the Jinx help or? Um, is it? You tell me. Well, I could, well, you said like, because if you, sh uh, she wasted the luck, it was immediately good. So I, st I guess I'm still holding two that I can use whenever I want. Yes. You still hold those two. Um, okay. I, her luck will apply to both things. Um, so what are Archie and Alex doing? Are, uh, Alex, as the motor breaks, you are like, you can get the emergency brake going to process up now that it's not moving as fast. Okay. So yeah, I probably then hit that when it's getting close to where it'll stop him close enough where he's not going to, you know, fall and get hurt, but mm -hmm. maybe not accurately mm -hmm. stop it in the right position. It's not going to be a very accurate stop. Yeah, but it'll be a stop nonetheless. Um, cool beans. And then what is Arkham? I'm kind of looking between the complete fuck up and save that was for Ferris wheel and making sure that whatever was filling the dolphin is adequately dissipated. And it's maybe um, going and Not only is costumes. it adequately dissipated, but the dolphin costume is gone. Oh, so in the things of looking between the two, I've done one look over there and looked back, and it's just vanished. Yes, and, and the goo is gone. And I, in which case, I will shout curse words and stomp my feet. 
and generally be a little bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So while the rest of you were doing this, you hear me uh, swearing and sputtering and obviously upset at something. Um. Looking back off in the direction of where the dolphin was. I'm gonna look at look over at Red. Like they're not in a good place, are they? No. He's, um. He's. You can still see he. Uh, they have tears, but they seem to be breathing a little better, and the red tentacle shadow thing around him is gone. But he still looks distraught a little bit. I mean. You know how he is when he he when he fucks up. Yeah. You know he takes it very seriously. Yeah, I'm just gonna go over to him for a second. Like I'm not at all focused on the cultists at the moment, and I'm just gonna like bend down, not get too close because I know he doesn't like that, and you know soothe again. It's okay. okay. No one has gotten hurt. Who? None of our friends have gotten hurt. Okay. You did good. None of this is your fault. You see, he's not really making eye contact with you. And it also doesn't help that the appearance is not great, considering that he's a little bloodied. Um, yeah. But he he just nods, but he's not smiling. He's not making eye contact. He's just not okay. <clears throat> yeah. I have news for the two of you in this very sweet moment. So... Um, so it, First, we'll start in the order that the luck roll went. Um, as Red is like, or Red is being comforted by uh, Ollie, like this close up, um, the red disaster inside of you kind of stirs. This is something it is not tasted before. This is a, in essence, it is not feasted on, and it would very much like to. Um, on Ollie's side, you get your uh, regular telepathic orders from upstairs um that whatever this thing is does not leave the park oh that's new after seeing that whatever is happening here does not leave so those are your luck points mm, so that just means red can't leave the park is my are my orders <clears throat> that is or how they word the you. uh no they they are specifically talking yeah. about red yeah for yeah, sure red the cultist yeah. thing is what you were here kind of they like that's a different reason for being here but yeah. like the red thing is new yeah because the orders i've been under this far has only, has been to like get rid of red and i have failed to do that so far and now they're telling me you're out of time. You're out of chances. Shit. With um, Archimedes having the, that weird sixth okay. sense, mm -hmm. would he maybe be able to sense that something shifted in the air? That there's yes. tension now? Um, could I just kind of look at them both and go, okay, Oli, what, what's the play? What's going on? Um, I have um, received new orders. Red, you can't leave this park. You need to stay here. You need to run. What? You need to run. And you see he looks up at you, and I'm going to say, just for fun flavor, mm. When you make eye contact with them, you see in one of his eyes, uh, it's not an eye. For a glimpse, it's a set of teeth. Oh, it's being gross. I ruined the tension. Yep. The sorry, but oh yep. god, that's, that's foul. It's 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 yeah. not it's not like they actually turn it to thee, but you can see like in his eye the the shimmer Ooh. of those teeth. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I am going to take a step back. Red, I'm not leaving you here. Yes, you are. <clears throat> because if not, then you're not leaving at all. Um, As you say that, uh, you four of you hear uh, another voice. 
perhaps we can make a deal. And the figure that started talking, the cultist that was talking to you originally steps back out of the carnival. And looks at you expectantly. What is your business here? That is none of your concern. Yes, it is. Only if you choose to make it so. And I continue to hope that you do not. But I offer you a simple decision. Give me that one. And he points over at Red. And the thing that lives inside it. It can be of any smirks. Great help to us. You may take the other children wandering among the spirits of this place. Only for him. No. He is my mission. You will not take him. Ollie. Red? Red? It's not just about you. I cannot let anyone get their hands on you or the Red Disaster. I can't let anyone get hurt. How do you begin? And people will get hurt if I leave you to these people. More than you can imagine. More than you can imagine. You said you trusted me, right? I do. I do. And keep trusting me. I I trust you, but I do not trust them, and I cannot go against orders, not this directly. I I, if you're not alive, then you can't protect anyone. And if you try to protect me, I can't promise I'll protect you. Because it's not going to let me. You don't need to worry about me. I don't know how many times I've told you about this. I am not alive. It doesn't matter if I live or die. That's not why I'm here to live. I'm here. It matters to me. Matters to let, us. Let the boy make his own decision. Or whatever. <clears throat> Red is going to stand up. Walk toward him. Mm -hmm. um, come, yes. And, and he's then going to look back at Ollie. Smile. And he's going to tackle the guy and try and banish himself and the guy <laughs> with him. Okay. Oh Roll me plus weird. And I'm going to add plus two because of my jinx. Okay. okay. Do it. That's good. It's good use. Oh my God. Watch it be a two. Watch him roll double once. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, that is going to be nine. So mixed success, huh? Okay, how do we handle this one? Hmm. Let me think on that. Because this is going to be important. Um, and this is relevant because this is like... Oh, this is normally a situation where I would roll off with you, but I feel like this is where the narrative, like you were talking about earlier, James, where the narrative comes in play because like i am not supposed to as the keeper make any roles whatsoever right like i'm 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 trying to i'm pattering and, and like trying to fill dead air because i'm like struggling to make the judgment call of how to handle this mixed success like if it's a fail it's easy if it's a complete success it's easy this is the hard answer for me where i have to come up with the result without yeah, yeah. any numerical basis uh here's a just a reminder one of the glitches could be a problematic side effect that's so... true and that's and that's really the one i'm looking at because okay um so we are going to go with problematic side effect um and nothing says it has to be towards them it can only be just to me yeah for another time no i got it um you banish you definitely remove the two of yourselves from this place um however you don't have control over the place that you go so i'm just gonna say for flavor i tackle him and the same teeth you saw in the eye appear in the ground and just engulf both of us before it just turns back into normal solid Ooh. 
I just try to like reach out and they just disappear and I yeah. I just sit there on my knees. Holy crap, how bad is that for us? So this um is go ahead, as sorry. Bad as it gets. This is I would good. love for uh, Alex to roll me plus sharp. Plus sharp? Yes. Because you are the expert. And I would like you. This is basically what... a lore roll. <laughs> I wonder how Ark is gonna handle. <laughs> yeah, he's saying a lot of things that are very hard to explain. I got a ten in total. Perfect. Great. Um. So as this is going on, um, you have me opportunity to look over like the dead cultists, right? The ones that were left here in the aftermath of all this insanity. Um. <clears throat> And looking along, like, the back of their jumpsuits, um, you can see that there is, like, a pattern stitched in black. So it's, like, black on black. It's not the easiest thing to see unless you're looking for it, right? Um, but I think it it's is, the point. Yeah. Uh, it is a sigil. It is a demonic sigil that you have seen before in, like, incredibly black magic rituals that specifically deal with like summoning things out of the downstairs it's bringing things from the basement up onto the ground floor so to speak um you specifically are able to recognize that rune as part of the name of a being known as abaddon presumably this is an abaddon cult <laughs> excellent uh, some fun things about that particular boy, the Destroyer. <laughs> Most common associated name. Um, Ollie, you're fairly new on the upstairs, so I don't know that you would pick that up right away. Yeah, no, I don't even remember what I learned as a when I was alive. So, yes. <laughs> so I imagine I know nothing. All I know is I failed. I imagine when Alex sees the uh, little insignia and sigil on the robes he starts he pulls out his journal starts flipping through it and finds the the same entry he's seen before oh, i killed it and um he's going to uh bring it to um ollie's attention and everybody else's attention there this is um definitely not a good sigil to find anywhere hmm. this is a uh, symbol of abaddon <sighs> should have just killed them. I should have just killed them. The first thing I did. I should have um, just followed orders. Oh, this is great. I love it. Oh. This is all my fault. Dance puppets. Dance! We need to buy them. Um, matter at this point. Whatever's so, going on can be fixed. I would like to jump in here because we are coming up on the end of our time. Yeah. Um, which is great because I think this is a to be continued in the next STD charity stream. How do we resolve this? What do y'all think? <laughs> I would love that. Uh -huh. I can't wait that long. Oh, uh, I'll have to check my <laughs> schedule, but <laughs> I'll probably be inside and not dying from Rona. Um, before yeah. we do that, I wanna I wanna set a final stage here. Yeah, um, yeah close close the circle. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, Alex, or uh, sorry, Red. I still accurate either way. Red. Um, yes, you are swallowed up on the ground by um, the teeth, and uh, you and this dude go like sucked into this like black space between realities. Um, and you feel yourself falling, but then your perspective feels like it flips 180 degrees and you're going up now and you come out onto sand. Um, specifically, uh, as you are looking up, you see boards above you um, and you see large pillars of wood in, you know, a pattern around supporting the structure on top of you. Um, looking around on the sand, uh, you see that you are in the middle of a circle in of red salt, it looks like, uh, that is marked with runes and sigils along its border. Um, <clears throat> and there seems to be like a few more black jumpsuit folks that are finishing this circle 
around the outside. Um, the cultist that you'd grab just kind of like cracks you in like the back of the neck, like the, you know, I'm talking about like right down here, like with like his fucking full force fist um, and just like knocks you off of him and onto the ground. And he like kind of springs out of this circle, taking very careful care to not touch anything um, and make it to the outside. Uh, and he looks back at the rest of them and he says, we have no more need of the other children. This one will be sufficient. The thing that he carries inside himself more than enough to open the rift and bring our Lord into this world. Finally. Did I notice he was not touching the red sand? Yes. Yes. He's going to look at how big is the circle? Uh, It's probably like a 10 foot diameter. It's pretty pretty big. And how small is the room? How many people are in it? Oh, you're not in a room. You are like underneath the block. Okay. Oh no, I try to banish us. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, this you tried to banish you to a completely different place, but it did not work as intended. That's fine. Um, then, seeing as how this the circle is seems important to them, um, I want to do what uh i want to not summon the monster but let go of the control partially and i i don't want to summon him but basically the control that i've been having of like anyone who gets near me just bad luck ruins them mm -hmm. i want to let that bad luck spread maybe not kill i don't know but definitely spread. I and feel you. See, see just how much bad luck I can cause. So you focus yourself and take a deep breath and try to attempt that. And you feel this like probing aura of darkness kind of extending about yourself. But as it touches the borders of the circle, mm -hmm. you can go no further. Shit. And you are trapped here. Um, the rest of you that are not under the boardwalk... Um, <laughs> you, uh, you get the other teenagers out. Um, they are very freaked out by these ghosts. Uh, you are able to collect them. No problem. You don't run into the dolphin. You don't run into, um, any of these cultists yet. Uh, but as you get the last one over the fence, look back towards the Ferris wheel, which is just kind of creaking back and forth in the wind. Now, um, you hear this. And I think that's the end. Woo! Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Holy crap. laughs> I've, had, I've, been, I've had chills this past 10 minutes. Like goosebumps. Well, I'm glad. That was oh so good, y'all. Yes. I'm glad. I got emotional for a second. I yeah. know. I'm gonna see eye teeth in my my nightmares now. It's just like <laughs> like in Rio's good dreams. And I I, I already po and I posted in the oh. uh, I posted images of it in the server, so you have a nice visual reference. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna let them sign off. Come back in just over an hour, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Kate pain game 55 our penultimate game uh is coming up i'm gonna get emotional so that's gonna be a thing that happens and then we've got some freaking dark matter at 9 p.m courtesy of our friends yes. at mage hand press we're going to space bitches we're going to win that setting the dark matter setting if you sign up for our giveaway not the physical mm -hmm. but the pdf copy mage hand press gave yeah, us 10 yeah, yeah. copies so go to twitter at terrible underscore party See the pinned tweet. It's a 30 second to fill out Google form and you have a shot at winning. So thank you all. That was fabulous. Thank you, Steve, for doing that You're again welcome. for us. That was incredible. Yeah, beautiful bastard. Thanks. I love wow. it. And if you want to find <laughs> more, go look up Slam Vanders or Classes Character. Other thing yes. to look at. Slam yes. All right. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in the next live stream, we'll see part two of yes. this. Hey, bunches of if I get my way, we're going to be Under doing another the charity stream in the next couple of months. So yes. oh, could yes. happen pretty quick. So, all right. Hell Peace yeah. out, y'all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back mm -hmm. here in just over an hour. Thank you again to everyone who played. Bye, everybody. Good night.
Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for Stay everything. safe.